And we're back! It's me! It's Talking Bollocks again! The Tarzan of podcasting is back. Little uh, little old school bit of Tarzan humour there. Oh yes, Culture, cultural references, bang on the money me. Hello, welcome, it is back. It is time for me to talk some bollocks and for you to have your ears ruined by me. So, uh, let's do it. My name is Howard H. Smith. I am lead singer of UK thrash band Acid Rain. Visit us, acidrain.co.uk, on all social media. Acid Rain, spelt acid, rain, R-E-I-G-N. Okay. Um, you can find us everywhere. Also, I uh, I do stand-up comedy um, as Keith Platt, professional Yorkshireman. You can find me at keithplatt.co.uk and Keith Platt on all sorts of social media. And you're listening to Talking Bollocks, the podcast, the Bollocast, whatever you want to call it. And you can find us all, all over social media. And when I say us, I, of course, mean me. Um, I am on uh, Twitter, Talking Bollocks, except with a CKZ at the end instead of CKS. Um, you can find us on Facebook. Um, please make sure you subscribe. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe elsewhere as well. If you're on iTunes, give us a review. Thanks for the recent ones. That was very cool. Very nice of you all. Thank you very much. And that's about it, really. So, let's start Let's start fucking about, shall we? What's been going on? What's been going on? Well, um, uh, as um, previous listeners will have um, will have heard, I um, uh, left full time employment um, way back in May, and um, I, yeah, I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. Um, so I've been um, I've been a benefit cheat for the last few months. Um, not at all. I've been on. Uh, I've been uh, going signing on for the first time since um, a, a a teenager since I was in Acid Rain first time round actually no actually since I was living in Newcastle when I was in Strange Things so I was a starving musician and um so uh, and yeah just trying to kind of get my head around what I want to do and um and it's kind of all come together so I'm um, I'm just freelancing, going to be working for myself, doing a bit of freelance business development consultancy. So if anybody out there uh, wants a hand with their business, give us a shout. Um, also, from uh, I'm also doing doing more stand up basically, and um, and more of this, and a few other little bits and pieces, and just just you know, I mean, I'm I'm even. I'm, I'm, I'm comparing a wedding soon, uh, so basically, if you need a mouth on a stick, if you need, if you've got an event where you need somebody um, to be gobby and uh, reasonably funny, you know, I, I don't know, I can do funny and, and not swear. It is difficult, but I can do it. Um, yeah, you know, birthdays, weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs, um, you know, you name it, beheadings, whatever. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm completely, um, I'm completely available. Basically, we'll work for food. We'll talk for food. That's, there you go. There you go. There's, there's the motto. There it is. We'll talk for food. That's me. Um, so yeah, what's been going on? Um, tooth fell out. That was nice. I bet you're all thinking, "Oh, you disgusting bastard! You didn't brush your teeth." I do brush my teeth. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, it was a crown that um, that I had to have uh, because of a root canal, and apparently crowns are liable to do that. So um, yeah, so I had a dentist hacking around in my uh, in my gum for half an hour and couldn't get all the root out. The old root. This is really fucking interesting, isn't it? Actually, if you've never listened to this before, you probably like. Why would anyone listen to this podcast? I thought it was supposed to be about. I thought they were supposed to have some really cool interviews on it. Well, yes, those are coming. But first, you have to listen to me jibber jabber and talk utter shit for a little bit, you know, before we before we get into that. Um, and I just want to say about the whole sort of, I don't know, being um, being unemployed um, um, and and kind of figuring out where I want to go. It's 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 been an interesting time. And um and if there's anyone out there listening to this who who is unemployed or has been at any time and is is in that position where you're just wondering what's going to happen and what you're going to do, I I absolutely completely sympathise and know where you're coming from. I don't I don't have any answers. I really don't. But um yeah um I I, I go from half the time looking forward to um the the challenge of a new life and the other half shitting myself because funnily enough you need money to live this life and um that's the shit thing and it's been it's been a really really interesting time and uh, it, it's yeah it's 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 kind of odd because I'm I've found myself almost like I've left the cult of working um 9 to 5 which I've done for about 20 years um believe it or not and um and whenever you do something for that length of time and then just stop it 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 is a bit weird, um, and I'm, it's almost like I've left. You know, like I said, left the cult of nine to five. It's like I'm having to reprogram um, 
myself um, through all those years and, it, and it's really odd I mean just little things like realising that I don't have to wait to the weekends to um, to wash my clothes for instance do a clothes wash because normally you know, I'd wait to the weekend to do that kind of shit um, I don't have to wait to the weekend to go and you know get the groceries and stuff like that now I know you must be listening to this and probably thinking fucking hell Howard come on where's the interesting stuff going to start but believe me it is, it's kind of really fucking odd that you find yourself like actually realising that wow I, yeah I'm completely programmed here um, and yeah it is scary having the um, having the security of uh, of a salary being being you know snatched away from under me um, it is a big of a, a bit of a rug pulling moment, but you know it, it's it, it is. I'm I'm really determined to make to, to make this the, um, uh, the the turning point whereby I I just do a lot more stuff. I mean, look, I'll level with you. The the last job I was at that I left um, it was the best paid job I've ever had, and um, and all I've done for the last twenty odd years since I moved to London is just go from better paid job, better paid job, better paid job, better, and and you know. Am I happy? Has it made me happy? No, not at all. I was miserable as fuck in my last job. When they came to me and said, right, look, you know, uh, this, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I was like, nah, disagree, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you know, well, so they paid me to leave. Um, who the fuck wouldn't, eh? Um, this, eh? This for 40 hours a week? Jesus. Um, anyway, um, you know, I, I just thought, yeah, I want to get out of this. In fact, look, I'll be completely honest with you. When they sat me in an office and said, so anyway, you know, your role is going to be is going to be removed from the business and that means you're at the risk of being made redundant. I seriously just looked out the window and I just thought, I can get the rest of the day off here. You know, it looks lovely out there. I'd love to be out in that on my bike. <laughs> and I think at that point you realise, you know, you're done. And... um yeah, you know, so anyway, to get back to the original point, Tangent fans, you know, it, you know, has it made me happy? No, not particularly. Not particularly. And and what this has made me do is actually kind of just reevaluate and and certainly financially reevaluate. And and look, I got a great piece of advice from a friend and he was like, "Look, make a list of all of your outgoings um a month." And I did, and I was like, "Fucking hell, really? Nowhere near as much as I thought. What have I been doing with the money I've been earning?" And yeah, what have I been doing with it? But instantly, I mean, I was I was working in central London, which straight away um, saved five hundred pound a month by not you know by no transport, buying coffees, lunches, things like that. And it's yeah, it's just like wow, and it's really made me reassess things. Um, and and I, I guess you know, as corny as it may sound, um, uh, you know, decide what's uh, what's important in life. You know, and and is it. Is it earning money or is it being happy? It's definitely being happy, definitely, um, and doing stuff that you enjoy. And I, and oh, I registered with a few recruitment, you know, and and I was getting a few recruitment sites like Total Jobs, Monster, all the usual, and then getting getting emails, looking at some of the job descriptions. Are you a go getter? Are you excited by smashing targets? Are you? Oh, fuck off! Really, fuck off! Does anybody believe that shit anymore? Do they? Really, though? Hey, you know, oh, can you work as a part of a team or are you just as... Oh, really? Really? You know, just fuck off. Fuck. I'm, it's, I'm really... I just thought, do you know what? I, I cannot do this. I cannot. I've never actually... I haven't, I haven't had, a, had a job interview for 20 odd years. I mean, um, uh, when I first moved to London, I had a job and then I got, uh, I got headhunted from that. And that's just the way it's worked. I've just gone, you know, just gone from job to job to job through knowing people or, or working with them. And then, and, and that's that. Um, and the thought of going and doing a job interview or something like that was just made, and you know, you know, starting somewhere new and you just have to feed them bits of your personality bit by bit because you don't want to go in there and be the big I am. And then, you know, and they're going to go for drinks and you don't want to really want to go with your new guys. So you go anyway because you have to. Otherwise, they'll think you're stuck up and fuck off. Take your fucking office politics. Shove them up your ass, man. I can't just no. Just a whole world of no. So yeah, that's it. You know, I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm I'm free as a bird. Will talk for food. So there you go. Tooth fell out. Might have to have a um. Might have to yeah. Oh yeah, I've changed subject by the way. Yeah, we're back to the dentistry. Yeah, and I might have to have um. Might have to have a little denture. 
for that one. Yes, that's right. A false tooth. A false tooth at 47. Not a fucking 107. Not 87. Oh, 47. Slightly depressing, to say the least. But there you go. Um, so, um, so, what's happened since... What's happened in the world of metal since last we spoke? Okay. Um, well, top of the bill... Um, and I'm sure you all know what I'm going to start with. That's right. The Butcher Babies are bringing a bit of the sexy back. Yeah, that's right. According to the Butcher Babies, yeah, they're going to bring a bit of the sexy back. Isn't that a relief for us all? Hey, you know, after all those, um, after all those years of, uh, you know, just putting out non-sexy stuff, uh, no. We've got, they are going to bring the sex back because that is what's important about thrash metal, isn't it? That is what, because by the way, that is what they appear to think they are. That's the claim. Yeah, that is the claim that they are a thrash metal band. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually opening the link on my phone at the moment to go to the very article, right? But it just absolutely cracks me up that, you know, oh no, we're not going to put tape on our nipples anymore. No, no, that's, oh no, 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 no. But, oh yeah, no, apparently we're going to, right, so here we go. Um, the music on the group's upcoming disc runs the gamut from great thrash metal, will be the fucking judge of what's great for fuck's sake, Great thrash metal to a little bit of a 90s influence. So in other words, not thrash metal. We're, we're singing, we're screaming, and it's just a great, great album. I couldn't be prouder of it. I think there's four songs where we do predominantly singing on it, and normally that would scare even me. It would fucking scare us all, love. Love, that's patronising, I apologise. Because I'm like, I'm a metal girl. I don't want to be singing, but it's so beautiful. It really is. So it's kind of ballady, but not too ballady. It's very dark and sensual. The lyrics are very sensual on this album. So bringing the sexy back is, is sensual, apparently. Um, I, there is a difference there. A very, very big difference. But, you know, she continued. I think we're bringing a little bit of the sexy back on this album that we kind of steered away from for a while. When we were building up our career, we wanted to be taken so seriously as metal chicks. So I think we kind of... <laughs> We wanted to be taken so seriously as metal ticks. We took, we got our tits out and put tape over the over our nipples. That's how seriously we wanted to be taken. Sorry, I'm paraphrasing. So I think we kind of let those hindrances go a little bit and said, "Let's just be us in all aspects. In all as aspects, I'm fucking this up. Aspects of us, from the metal to the sexy to everything else. Right? Okay. And and she uh, um. Uh, anyway, Carla is quick to point out I couldn't do an album with no thrash on it because that's my passion is it? because I've listened to a lot of your stuff and I didn't realise it was thrash I think my favourite song on the album is a completely ridiculous thrash metal song that you'll hear she said it's just amazing in fact one line in the song is about my Corvette that is always broken down I have a 75 Corvette because I'm a real Detroit girl with a real American car the song is completely ridiculous lyrics but it's cool totally thrash it sounds totally fucking shit Jesus Christ, I can't wait to hear it. I really can't wait to hear that. Eh? It's just amazing. I, I, I love this. <laughs> in fact, one line in the song is about my Corvette. It's always broken down. I have a 745 Corvette because I'm a real Detroit girl. I'm a girl with a real American car. Yeah, it's a real American car, all right? It's always fucking breaking down. There you go, love. Well done. Pissed on your own country. Save me the trouble. Apologies to anybody listening in America. I don't really mean that when I say America. I mean North America. When I say North America, I mean the United States. Because North America also includes Canada. And America includes Mexico, believe it or not. No wall yet, Donald. You cunt. Um, and don't build one, you twat. Um, so anyway... I mean, I, I I don't know where I don't know where to to start on on, on that, you know. Uh, it, oh, here's an, here's a bit more. Sorry, on their collaboration with the producer um, Avets, Carla said he doesn't do uh, any auto tuning or pitching or anything like that. No, that's what he tells you, and then you leave the stu studio, and he does a fuck ton of it to make it sound half decent. So every note on this album is 100% authentic. Uh, fuck off. You, you've used Pro Tools like everybody else. That is a bullshit statement. And it's really cool to be able to say that an al on an album nowadays, 
I think because people are so used to hearing auto-tuned and touched up and fixed up, this album is exactly what we've always wanted to do. It's a, well, look, here's a fact. They'll have used Pro Tools on it. The albums will be gridded. That's that, 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 sorry, the drums will be gridded. That is the way that everybody works. So that, that is bullshit. Um, uh, and now, which keeps me, yeah, there, there's a, a little bit blurred lines auto tuned, touched up, and fixed up. Yeah, you know, there, there will be. Sorry, there will be. That's the one thing we've always wanted to capture because I think that we're a great live band. And when you're a good live band, you want to capture the energy. And we finally found a producer that can help harness that live energy and actually into the album. And we've actually found some cracking bras to harness our amazing breasts. I kind of put that on the end there. I think you probably guessed that anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not really doing the doing uh, females and metal any favours at all, are you, butcher babies? I mean, it, it's just... It's just fucking bollocks, really. Utter fucking bollocks. Did you, uh, is it me, or does that all sound really contrived? Uh, I mean, and I'm sorry if you're listening, ladies. I know they follow me on Twitter, but I'm sure they're not listening. But it, it just sounds so fucking contrived. I'm going to get them on. Uh, fuck it. Shall I, I'm going to try and get them on the podcast. How's that? I mean, you know, I'm sure they'll tell me to fuck off. And I would in their situation. Um, but yeah, what, fuck it. Why not? Why not? And, and and not do the usual interview, the usual cool chat. Just go, right, OK, look, here are the here are the things that I think are bollocks about you. Please convince me that, you, that you're genuine. And, you know, could be, <laughs> could be one of the shortest podcast interviews ever. But fuck it. Let's give it a go. So anyway... From the contrived to the absolute opposite. Um, the new Prong album, Zero Days. Fucking loving it. Absolutely loving it. Um, I mean, Prong are on an absolute roll now. Um, Zero Days is, yeah, for my money... Well, for my money... Uh, well, I, yes, I have bought the CD and all the rest of it. Um, it it's cracking, cracking follow-up to No Absolutes. Um I mean, you know, those are just, those are two cracking albums right there. And, um, and you know, Tommy Victor having, funnily enough, back to back with all the jibber jabber that we just heard from the Butcher Babies. Tommy Victor is, is like, you know, I saw an interview with him and he's going, look, yeah, I think prong fans are going to really like this. There's a bit of everything in there. You know, there's the thrashers, there's the, there's the anthemic ones and all this. And, you know, I think people are going to really dig it. And do you know what? He's absolutely spot on. What a change it makes to hear, have, hear an artist actually have something relevant to say about their music instead of irrelevant instead of completely getting like where they come from totally you know just, just like you know trying to flog the album instead of actually telling you what it's like but um you know what can i say um it, it is a cracking album i really suggest anybody anybody who's like even remotely interested in prong um yeah, you need to look that up because it is a fuck. Look it up. Like you're going to struggle to find it. Like there's some sort of fucking mystery to find in uh, finding music these days. Just get onto get onto YouTube, whatever. But um, don't do that. YouTube cunts. Well, YouTube, it's Google, isn't it? Um, so yeah. Uh, and if you're listening to this on YouTube, that's right. You know, sorry. You know, but pack of cunts. Um, yeah, do 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 get hold of a copy. Um, try and you know just try and hear as many tracks off the album as possible because it is an absolute stonker. It really is. Um, and look, we're coming up to about twenty minutes, and uh, at least about half of that was me going on about me and, uh, and my life. But I, I don't know. I, the reason I did that was kind of I don't know. It is kind of cathartic to talk about it um, in you know in a room of my own. But I, I know there's some of you out there listening, and I know some people will have been through something similar because whenever you talk about stuff like this, it just, shit happens, man. It's certainly not just happened to me. It's happened to loads of people, and I'm sure there's people listening. And and it's kind of like, I don't know, you know, maybe they're going through the same situation. Maybe they've been through it, and, and, and it's reminded them of, of what good times they're going through now, hopefully. Um, but, you know, I, I just... And, and ironically enough, that does lead us um, almost professionally <laughs> into, uh, into the first interview, because uh, this is with Dave Ingram, who, as you will uh, hear, um, has just left Hell Bastard as a bass player, and he's also currently unemployed because he hated his job so there you go it, it this this moves perfectly into um in the chat with dave ingram who um who left hell bastard after a rather controversial gig at the um uh, uh rebellion at blackpool this year for those of you that don't know that is a very big um three-day punk fest and um uh, basically hell bastard played got about halfway through it had to be stopped the venue had to be evacuated um do you know what? I don't need to say any more. I think Dave and I discuss it and, and plenty more besides. So um, here's myself and Dave Ingram having a chat about a week ago. 
And actually, before I do do that, um, there, this interview is in three parts, which I've edited together, but we were having lots of technical difficulties, so you will hear references to them, but it, is, it should flow quite nicely. Hey, <laughs> you know, the, the editing skills. Apparently, I do have some. There we go. Is it working? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Wonderful. Technology has worked first time. This is that, that, that's a that's a first time for me. That's the record, is it? <laughs> uh, pr- pretty much, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm managing. How about yourself? Yeah, but I'm I'm the same. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm unemployed at the moment. I was made redundant uh, at the end of May. Um, oh fucking hell, man! Sorry to hear that. Oh, don't be. It's fucking great. <laughs> um, I quit. I quit my job for two months ago. You know. Well, so. I, well, basically, I got paid to leave one that I hated. So, um, mm. yeah. well, that's that's always good, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I just left, although um, I just left one that I hated. Well, so. <laughs> although I'm, I'm now, I'm now kind of, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to start freelance in September, and um, and it's 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 all I'm I'm trying to undo. Uh, 20 years of um, of programming, if you like, you know, of right. of, of having a job, and uh, mm. and I've decided to break out on my own and go freelance. And well, it, it's it's just like you know, your you, your mind, half your mind is going, yeah, this is great, and the other half is going, whoa, fuck, what's this? <laughs> I don't know. What do I do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's weird. I, I mean, I will have probably gobbed off about this for ages on the podcast already. So people will be like listening to the interview going, oh, fucking hell, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so what, what, happened, what happened with yours to, to make you uh, to walk out? Um, I was being treated like a cunt. Right, okay. But you are I a cunt. The... Well, yeah, but, you know, I was being treated like a bigger cunt than I actually am. Oh, well, that, well, that's, that's bang my... out of order. And uh, the depression kind of... It was making me depressed, basically, and it got to the point where I got home from work one day called the missus and she I didn't even need to say anything to her and she was just like you need to leave right the fuck now you know yeah um so I'm still kind of uh dealing with that at the moment you know so it's not uh been it's not been a pleasant month or so you know and then all this shit that's happened obviously hasn't helped matters so yeah well I mean all this shit let's let's get all this shit out the way up top so um Mm. uh, because um I'm sure people will be interested to hear your your side of things, and um, and also, yeah. um, I mean, the fact that you clearly you felt that you know your you, your position in the band, not your position in the band, was untenable, but you you, you couldn't carry on. Yeah, it's. Um... I mean, is that, I mean, that's that's um, that's that's something that I, I mean, you know, am I right or am I wrong, or was it a case of you know, well, were words yeah. had? It's, uh, I don't know where to start, man. <laughs> I well, mean, how about, how about we start with the night itself, the infamous night of rebellion? Right, well, I'll, okay, I'll, um, I'll, I'll give a brief rundown of it. Um, okay, and we're not going to, we're not going to dwell on it, mate, because we've got plenty to talk yeah, about. Yeah, of course. Um, base, so basically, get to the show, uh, we're about to go on stage, we're, we're backstage setting everything up. And the fire spitting thing is something that Scruff has done before. You know, it, it's not, it's a common thing in Hellbastard. And he kind of clocked me and said, are you going to do this with me tonight? Because he wrote me into doing it with him in Slovenia. And I was just kind of like, no. You, what? No, you idiot. It's, uh, fucking, have you spoken to him about this? You know, had a bit of a back and forth and kind of said, listen, I can tell you exactly what's going to happen if you do this, you know, like speak to them about it or don't do it at all. And he, and he kind of got, you know, like, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right sort of thing, you know. Um, so we get on stage and, you know, I kind of clock him lighting his torch and I just kind of figured like, oh, well, he's obviously spoken to them about it. And then I saw everyone's faces and it was just <laughs> like, oh, fuck, here we go. You know, um, everything. I, I mean, I, I shouldn't have been at that show in the first place. I was an absolute, I was an absolute wreck. I was violently, violently unwell, and I just, I just wanted to get off stage. And uh, the, the sound was. I was stood right in front of Scruff's amplifier, and that's all I could hear. And my ears are actually still ringing from that night. It's, like, it was just, it's so unbelievably loud. So it was just the set. The few songs that we did play were just appalling. Right. And then maybe 
three songs in just like an just like all i remember is just like an army of security officers officers just kind of storming on stage and going show's over get your stuff and get out and right that's kind of a relief to be honest with you so so um uh i mean obviously that's not the way um and but there's there's more to this isn't there because ultimately um from what i hear that that was the end of the night for everybody was that the case was the place evacuated or from what I heard, yes. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, we went back. Like, we took our stuff backstage. And, like security come over there, like take a wristbands, like escort us outside, like you know, like, like just like fucking cubed in by security officers, and we just get taken out out, out back. And there's like you know, don't don't come back in. Um, Dougie quit there and then on the spot. And at that point, I was just so sick and tired. I, I just wanted to go to sleep, you know. And um, bear with me one pass. second. Bear, bear with me one second because I think we got a few. I just got a few gremlins in the machine here. Hang on a sec. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's see if um, let's see if that's any better. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. where were you? Um, yeah. So we got escorted outside, and I, at, that, at that point, I was just so tired, sick, and stressed that I just wanted to go to bed. You know, I, I was just completely clocked out. And like I said, Doug, Dougie just quit on the spot. He just went home. Uh, who, who was uh, the guitar player for those who are unawares? Uh, Ex guitar player. Right. And got some sleep, went and got my coach. And I checked I checked Facebook on my phone while I was on my coach journey home. And it was only really then when I saw everything afterwards that, that the reality of what had happened had actually like, really set in. So what I was told was, or from what I've seen, apparently what happened was that, because um, Scruff doesn't use alcohol for this little stunt of his. He uses paraffin. Uh, right. So it was okay. like kept, and he claims it's watered down. I don't believe that because I've tasted the stuff. You know, it's uh, that that's in no way watered down. And I, I think, I guess maybe he had like a like a uh, what do you call it, like a cup of it or something on stage. It must have got kicked over when the security got on or something. Because supposedly that's what kicked it off is that they had to evacuate the place to clean up all like chemical stench and everything everywhere. And sheer terror's set got uh, cancelled. It eventually got rescheduled for the following day, but their set for the night got cancelled. And uh, yeah, people weren't happy. Yeah, and uh, that's really all I've got for you, man. That's that's pretty much just that's so, pretty so, much it for the night itself, you know. So, and and so, at what point? At what point did you uh, did you follow uh, said guitarist out the door? Um, when I read the um, when I read when I read all the stuff on on Facebook the following day, it was actually um, someone you both we both know, uh, Mr. Pete D. Obviously, he's your bass player. Yeah, um, and he he was there, and he and he he was the one that kind of like posted a thing about it on Facebook. Yeah, and um, he messaged me afterwards. Like, like I had a message from him, and I was kind of going to play it and kind of see how things played out, but it was just five words he said to me in, at the end of this message. He was just like, "You deserve better than this," right. and I couldn't really argue with that. You know, so. well, it, well, it's funny you should say that because I saw I saw the exact same post. Because mm. I, I, I'd seen, you know, I'd seen bits and pieces. Um, I, well, funnily enough, I saw your status that you'd, that, that you'd left, and that's when we started messaging. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, and I, I hadn't heard anything at that point. Um, and that's why I kind of messaged you, and, you know, to say, like, right, right, dude, what happened? Yeah, what's going on, yeah. Yeah, and obviously you'd, you'd kind of, you know, had, yeah, I mean, you alluded to what happened, but you'd had enough by then, and I totally get that. Um, and then it wasn't till afterwards, because Facebook and its fucking algorithms and all the rest of it, that I saw <laughs> that I saw Pete's um, post, and I was like, "Fucking hell!" Right? Yeah. Okay. Now I see uh, what's gone on, um, and and wow, that that that's tough because that's like that's 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 your your job and yeah. your 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 band. Um, well, basically, uh, you know, you you're better than this in both cases in the space of a few weeks. Yeah, um, and it's it, it's really upsetting as well because I mean, not not only were, were were we let down, but the organizers were let down, the fans were let down. That that's the bit that really upsets me. And you know, I've been a fan of Hellbastard since I was a young teenager, and to kind of be given that opportunity is kind of life changing, really. Yeah, and then to have it kind of, you know, like like taken away by just an, a single act of stupidity is is 
heartbreaking, I suppose, is uh, the only word for it. Well, no, no, exactly. And, and the thing is that, uh, unfortunately, it, it, it is what it's just a, the whole thing is just a lose lose all round. I mean, you know, it, it does nothing for the band, it does nothing for Scruff's reputation, it does nothing for the festival, it does nothing for the fa- I mean, it really is, unfortunately, one of those, it's just an unsalvageable pile of shit. Yeah, pile of shit's a good way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's 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 been very uh, uh, comforting, I suppose, because a lot of people have kind of come forward and said, like, you know, we know that you or Dougie or anyone else haven't had anything to do with this. We know that this is just the actions of one person. So it's like, don't don't worry too much. You know what I mean? Which I, which I really appreciated. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think you know when when anything's referred to as as. Well, let's 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 speak frankly. When anybody refers to that event and you know what happened with Hell Bastard in inverted commas, it's actually well, actually you can replace that word with the word scruff. Basically, it's just yeah. you know he fucked up. He should know better. Um, and you know it, it, it's just it's just it's just really sad. And but the, you know the decision for you that you've actually taken, uh, I have to say, I think is absolutely admirable because from what you've said, you can hear it in your voice that. It's not something you wanted to do, but you ended up, I guess... You can't put your neck out on the line for something like that, can you? I mean, we he's, can't, I mean Scruff's been yeah. doing this since the late 70s. I've, been, I've only been doing this for sort of like 12 years, and it's taken me that long to kind of claw my way to that sort of point, you know? So why, for one stupid decision that I tried to talk him out of in the first place? That's the way I see it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, I've, and I, I've only, I'll only say it briefly, but... Uh, Boy, howdy, the way that he handled the situation afterwards has not been good. <laughs> right, OK. OK. Yeah, well, um, yeah I mean, look, it, it, this, we, we're, not, we're not here to, to, to gossip in no, public. No, no, of course not. But, yeah. but, I, but I, I'm sure everybody listening will completely get what you mean. I mean, by the sounds of it, um, you know, you, you did everything you could to save the situation at the time. And I'm sure you've done everything to, to save any kind of friendship and anything and, and professional relationship since. And I'm sure it's fallen on deaf ears. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, it, all of this could have just been avoided by a few simple words. Am I allowed to do fire spitting tonight? You know, that's it. That's all you needed to do, man. You know, <laughs> it's like, come on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's just, I mean, I hate the fucking words, but it's just basic health and safety, isn't it? Yeah, you know all these. There's no, you know. Okay, yes, punk rock is supposed to be a bit dangerous, but that's taking it a little too fucking far, man. You know, come on, there's, there are limits, there are boundaries. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and the thing is, well, yeah. I mean, it's just, it it is what it is. Um, the the band seem to be carrying on. Yeah, I understand that. He, I think he got two of the guys from Acid Age to do the tour with, with him, which is like fair enough, you know. Yeah. So. Well, I've got, I got nothing to say on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, ab- absolutely. Yeah, you you weren't on that tour, so uh, yeah, you, you you can't really talk about it. Um, yeah. Well, look, you know, I, I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate you being so uh, so so candid and, uh, and and forthright about the whole thing. Um, so here we are, part two. Hopefully, um, uh, yeah, the uh, <laughs> the technology will hold in there. Um, so you and I, you and I were talking recently about um, uh, what you have since dubbed Killian on command and um, yes. whacking some whacking some violence covers together and uh, and trying to get them out there and um, raise a bit of money and awareness for uh, for Sean Killian. Um, Indeed. And I know I throw my hat into the ring early doors, which is which is still there. Um, yeah, absolutely. Man. So, so um, have you? Have you? Is there been any developments? Um, at the moment, it's just a matter of getting the drums recorded. Once that's done, I can. It's like it's full steam. But again, you know, kind of, kind of broke at the moment, so <laughs> it yeah. makes life a bit difficult. Yeah. Um, but as, as soon as we have some drums, uh, like drum tracks down, it's just like yeah, fucking full bore. I can get the bass and rhythm guitars done in a day. So. Well, awesome, and if you just if you fly if you fly the files over to Pete, I'll go round to Pete's and uh, do whatever you want on whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. Man. We've had a, it, it's been really nice a, a lot of, because as soon as I kind of put that forward to people and said I'm thinking of doing this, a lot of a lot of people came forward and sort of said, "Fuck yeah, I want I, you know anything for Sean." You know. Well, we I remember yeah. I remember started you know I started retweeting and replying via Talking Bollocks and Acid Rain. Um, just mm. to try and get you know to try and get word out, and I saw that um, Phil Demmel was w- was liking a few of the tweets as well, which is yeah, he gave a thumbs up. That's gr- that was great, man. That was really cool. Then 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I've got I I I I have got a way of getting in touch with Phil. Um, uh, so you, you know, you know, let me know if you want to go down that route, and we can um, I, whether he'd be willing to contribute anything to it, or or even if it's just a case of saying, look, hey, Phil, if we get you know, if, if we can when when we get this done, if we can get your endorsement, you know, will you can you tweet it yeah. out? And, and and if Phil's doing it, then maybe he'll talk to Rob, and we can get both those guys. Tweeting it out, and you know, because that would it's, be wonderful. You know, because it's not, it's not like it's some, you know, it's some fucking, you know, uh, tribute project. You know, there's, there's a, there's a very, very serious side to this. You know, Sean is, is, you know, his life's at risk here. I saw, a, I saw a photo of him because I think uh, Ray Vegas went and paid him a visit recently, and uh, Sean's wife posted a photo, and it just broke my fucking heart. You yeah. know, it's just sort of like, man, yeah. no one fucking deserves that. You know. Well, yeah, and, and and like I mean, I I was I mean I've, I told um, I told the listeners on the podcast a while back that um, that I was saying, look, I've got a thrash legend who's agreed to come on the show. Well, I'm actually dealing with his wife, and she said he'll do it, and she's given me his email address, and I've just got to basically um, hassle him, and and we'll sort of time out and do it. And I, I emailed him, and she gave me his personal email address, and it went. I'd got the thumbs up and everything, and I emailed him three or four times, never got any response, and I. I emailed her back and she said, look, he's really busy at work at the moment. Hang in there. And I actually chatted quite a lot um, uh, with his wife. Um, and we, you know, we, we, we kind of became email buddies. And um, uh, but eventually I said to her, look, it's, it, it, you know, there's only so many times I can email without feeling like I'm just fucking really winding him up. Um, yeah, of course. You you know. Know, and also it, there reaches a point as I, as I found we're doing this stuff as well is like, um, you know, people, I mean, I've even communicated directly with people who've said, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, I'd love to come on. Let's set it up. And you know what musicians are like, you know, yeah, yeah. I'd love to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, I'm in. And then you say, OK, right, here's a d- uh, days, times, please. You never hear from them again. Oh, I'm too busy. I'm too I'm, I'm, I'm washing my pubes that day, you know. Yeah, obviously. yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, um, so basically, know that story all too well. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I, I you know, it, you can only go so long. But it was, and I, I kind of said to the, I kind of said to my, uh, you know, my audience, well, look, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, in the spirit of full transparency, um, look, the guy I was trying to get hold of was Sean Killian, but unfortunately, um, I just haven't been able to get, you know, get him on. I mean, I'm having the same issue with somebody at the moment who's a thrash legend who doesn't do many interviews, and he's totally agreed to come on, and we. We keep messaging, but also there's an eight-hour time difference, and it's really difficult. And of we, course, we've yeah. missed each other a couple of. Well, he's missed me a couple of times, so it's it's a bit of a pain in the ass, really. But you know, there you go. And anything for Sean, man. It's like it's uh, it's it's like it's like I said on the on the original post. It's sort of like he he's his music did so much for me growing up. You know, when you're when you're a fucking raggy little 17 year old and you're just pissed off all you need to do is put on eternal nightmare and you feel better after smacking your head against the wall for 15 minutes you know well ab- um, absolutely and i mean from from my own personal experience we you know we put an album out in 1988 that um that you know and the the one the review that counted for the, the most was um was kerrang and and paul miller basically you know said this is a pretty good album but you know the sing is the weak point and he lets it down and you know you're you know it's a, it, you know and he just didn't he didn't like my style and so when i read the same you know and loving eternal nightmare like i did and then seeing some similar kind of reviews of eternal nightmare saying this is a great album but jesus you know this i was like but but he's fucking great and it, it, it kind of you know it was it was inspirational you know yeah man it's, and that's the th- that's the thing with uh, with Sean as well. It's it's like uh, I think they said it a lot on the um, was it the Blood and Dirt DVD? Oh, I have that actually. Uh, but they said on the Blood and Dirt DVD, it's like you either love him or you fucking hate him. It's like there is no in between. You know? Well, absolutely. Uh, do you know? Well, do you know what? Do you know what he made? He made such an impression. I remember having a conversation with John Connolly on our first European tour, and uh, we were talking about we were just talking about you know thrash and who was around. And um, and John was like, "Hey, have you heard? Have you heard the dude in violence?" So I was like, "Yeah, I'm a massive fan." He was like, "Yeah." He goes, "Look, he's like, he's doing something really interesting there. He's like, there's no one sounds like them." So like, you know, it doesn't matter love him or hate him. You know, there's there's nobody sounds like that, and it's like it's really unique style. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I love it." He was like, "Yeah, me too." You know, um, yeah, that, that's the thing. It's unique. You know, it's it's one of those things that no one's managed to kind of successfully imitate since, and I and that's what I really like about it. Oh yeah, great, thanks. No pressure. Yeah, you just send those files over for me to try and fuck up. 
I love you, Howard. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Pick a real. And I tell you, I tell you what. If you fucking pick calling in the corridor, calling in the coroner. Yeah, I'm sending no. it back. <laughs> as simple as that. Paraplegic, maybe. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sports jacket, cool tie, and wheeling out the body. I mean, what a come fucking and, line. Come and play football with us. <laughs> I mean, his, his, his fucking, it was his lyrics as well, because some of his lyrics are just like, well, Torture Tactics, for instance, which, which was, well, yeah. you know, which was banned off the, we, we, you know, they'd already pressed albums up and had to destroy them because it was on the original, uh, the original album. Um, yeah. and, uh, and like you it said, was on para- the Japanese pressing, though. Sorry? It was on the Japanese pressing of, of, of pressing the masses, though. I've never, and I've never had, I've never managed to find a copy. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you can get you can get them for about a hundred quid. <laughs> oh well, in a, I tell you, do you know what? Be, being being the fucking geek I am, because I've obviously got the song since because it came out on the EP and everything else. Yeah, yeah come on. But the the one thing I want is the T shirt that they that they had done at the time, which was you know it oh, had two thousand copies destroyed. D- destroyed, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, but I think it was it was wasn't it twenty thousand copies. Twenty, yeah, twenty thousand. That was it. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was kind of like you know, and it was it was sort of it it, it was quite apt because the album's called "Oppressing Oppressing the Masses," and it's very you know, which is a very sort of a title derived from censorship. And then to have yeah, exactly. your fucking album censored and destroyed, it's just like wow, this is <laughs> this is you know, it's actually happening. Yeah, where to shoot yourself in the foot, Atlantic? You know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Or you know, or was it? Or did they think? Do you know what? Um, we can do this and actually get a shitload of press out of it, which they did. Hmm. Well, um, yeah, actually, that's, that's a point, isn't it? Maybe it was just a media stunt. And it, well, it did yeah. bring it brought more notoriety to the to the album than it would have. Um, and um, you know, uh, or unless unless it was the label putting the foot down, because remember, you know, this is a time when the PMRC was still around. And oh God, yeah. so the, so it was it it was and it was worse than being than the PMRC, PMRC censoring you. What was happening is is that labels were starting to censor themselves, or rather, you know, they were, artists were being censored by their own labels, not even by a third party. Well, just out of fear. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. And that's uh, but of course, you know, it it all went it all went tits up when they realised that they created that parental advisory sticker and that beca- and that became a badge of honour. Yeah, it's brilliant. I remember, I remember you just speaking of the peer bus, you, know, just, you just reminded me of, a, of an interview I saw with Ice-T, because obviously he was that whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and obviously it was spearheaded by Tipper Gore. Oh, Al, Gore, <laughs> Al Gore's wife, yeah, don't worry. I'm yeah. Uh, yeah, well aware of her. And his, and his response, his response to being asked about this was sort of like, at the end of the day, what have you heard from her these days? It's like, it's if a girl could eat a hot bowl of dicks. <laughs> yeah, well, she's well, she's not even Mrs. Gore anymore, is he? She, he, he exactly. He, he chucked her, and also, I think that that all came back to bite his political career in the ass as well, because of, because yeah. his his opponents started using his wife's behaviour. As being this purist and this and this you know queen of censorship and which was yeah. and all of a sudden you had you you know you you had political figures tearing down what she'd set up where you know <laughs> as, as 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 censorship and and being anti-American and against the Constitution and ineffectively using all the same arguments that Jella Biafra, um, that Ice T and that Dee Schneider were using at the time. Yeah. Uh, not enough popcorn on the planet. I know. I, I still remember seeing. Um, I still remember seeing um, Ice T and Jello Biafra on Oprah. <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember? No, that? I don't. I need to hunt that down. I've, I've, I've got it on. Believe it. Oh, this is. Uh, I'm such a geek. I've got it on videotape. <laughs> I've got. I've, I've actually got. I've actually got that oh. that interview on videotape. Oh, it's beautiful. And I bought it. God. I bought it from a record fair as well. I know it's got it's got this like manky photocopied shitty cover um that's so, oh, you know, amazing. Uh, uh, yeah and it's actually it's actually a bit do you know what I'll see if I can dig it out and um I'll um I'll t- I'll take a picture of it and I'll uh, I'll either <laughs> I'll either send it to you um or I'll just I'll just post it and um yeah and post, t- that, t- post that post that the world needs to see that <laughs> yeah I know it's it's a dead it's a dead Kennedy's video and I think it's a boot I think it's a bootleg live um, but with with the with the infamous Oprah interview on the end. Um, so yeah, honestly, I mean, because I 
I bought I bought a uh, you know one of those Dead Kennedys No More Censorship T-shirts for the No More Censorship Fund to help you know for Jello's um, legal defence when oh yeah of uh, course yeah and uh, and also um, I, I bought a couple of drinks mats of that as well it's because they produced all of this stuff to to um, to raise funds and I bought I bought a, a, a bunch of it from Red Rhino Records in York. Um, yeah. Who were who were supporting it at the time, and they were saying, "Yeah, this all goes this all goes back to Alternative Tentacles to help them um, fund their legal battle." So it was. Fucking hell! I know, I know. It, it was it, crazy times, dude. Crazy times. So, have, have you um, to go back to to Sean? Have you um, have you decided on um, on uh, on what songs to do yet? Um, yes. I, at the moment, it's look. It, well, Kill on Command. It, they have Kill on Command has to be there. I mean, yeah, and, uh, duh, you know. Um, Paraplegic, I'm very tempted by as well. Para, because that because that's that's one of those things that's all like they demoed it, they played it live, but they never actually put it on an album. And I think that's criminal because that song's amazing. Yeah, you know. I mean, it's a, it's a song about beating up cripples. I mean, what's not to love? Of course, you know. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's not um, it's not sensitive in any way. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't get away with putting out a song like that these days, could you? <laughs> no, no, I, I can't imagine why. <laughs> but it's a good song at the end of the day. You know, that's how I see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I know, uh, uh, who was it? So someone was pining, pining for us to do Gutter Slut as well. And I'm sort of like, well, which is more offensive, paraplegic or Gutter Slut, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 we, we've, you, I, I think you've got to. There, there's, there's got to be, um, there's got to be some of the classics in there. Do you know what I mean? I, I think, I think, yeah. whilst paraplegic and gutter slot are good songs, if, if you want to appeal to violence fans, we, we, you know, it, there, there's, there's got to be some, like you said, kill on command's got to be in there. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, calling in the coroner is an absolute classic. Well, it's um, funny you should say that because Mr. Ian Glasper, who has offered to contribute the stamping ground cover of that song. Oh, really? Which uh, I think was on uh, it was on like a thrash tribute album about something like fifteen years ago or something like that. And that kind of twigged it off a little bit. Actually, it twigged off an idea because I know that Lich King as well recently did a cover of Eternal Nightmare on their I think it was their newest album. Right, and yeah. it was bloody amazing so i messaged them about it and they you know we're still talking but you know i think they might be happy to contribute that towards it as well so it's sort of because if i think if we record too much it's going to create too much work oh no and absolutely absolutely it's i i i don't want to i don't want to be an asshole and kind of put it this way but it's sort of like time might not be on our side and that sounds a bit crass to say and i hate to say it but you know what i mean uh, I, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly. No, what you mean. it's right. So hold, hold I it. think hold it. Any better? Brilliant. Good. Great. Brilliant. There we go. So, um, so we were. Yeah, you were saying. Um, uh, well, yeah, sort of. We need. We need to get this done sooner rather than later. Yeah, I. I mean, not not to be morbid about it, but it's just sort of. It's one of those things where it's kind of like the sooner we can get it out, the better. You know. Which, you know, I, I, I feel really horrible saying that, but, you know, do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. you know where I'm coming from. Dude, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to get it out while he's still with us. Mm. Um, and hopefully... I mean, obviously, you know, we've got to hope for the best, because it is just up to whether or not they can find a donor at this point, to my understanding. Yes, yeah, that's, so. that's, that's my understanding as well. Um, and, uh, I mean, yeah, all we can do is, all we can do is hang in there um, and and hope that we can um, that we can make a difference as well. Yeah, and that, and that's exactly it. I mean, it's it, it's all that we could really do to help, and therefore, why wouldn't you do it? You know, it's, <laughs> some people kind of questioned me as to why I was doing it. I'm sort of like, are you are you fucking blind? You know, it's like, why wouldn't I do this? Why wouldn't we get together and, and do something to help them out? You know, I mean, fucking hell. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's not in the UK, mate. It doesn't have the NHS. It's 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 America. You know, like you break you break your leg, it sets you back two and a half grand. You know. Yeah, more, absolutely. Probably. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, it's uh, and like I say, I mean, the, the, it's so much love to die. It's been really, really wonderful to see all of that support for him uh, in the aftermath of, of that news coming out. So. Yeah, yeah, um, and and uh, mm-hmm. and sort of serves as a cautionary tale as well. <coughs> 
when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, thinking that partying hard is, um, is 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 a good idea. I mean, we all, you know, don't get me wrong. I like a drink as much as the next man, but um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it does it does take its toll. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, so that, that, that's kind of a shocking bit as well. So like, that's um, kind of a, a a sobering, no pun intended, to call to have. You know, it's just like, wow, Jesus. You know, they're like that. That, that can actually happen. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. I mean, it, it, and oh, I don't know. You know, it's, you know, there's 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 kids involved. There's a wife involved. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that, you know. It, it, it's just a, it's just a really, really, um, a really sad situation, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, and it's sort of like, and, and I mean, I, I don't, I've never met the guy, never spoken to the guy, but you know, I, I'm a fan of his music, and he seems like a, a pr- pretty swell bloke, to be fair. And obviously, with a, when you've got family involved as well, it's just kind of like, well, you know, every, it's like Tesco, and every little helps. You know, how British. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we'll record, ex- we'll record the we'll record the EP on horse meat, shall we? Yeah, yeah, except we're not. Yeah, we're not Tesco, <laughs> so we're not cunts. But um, <laughs> yeah. Um, now I know there's um, uh, there was there was uh, some uh, some other uh, some other stuff you wanted to talk about as well. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm doing an, an album under the title of Nefastorus. That's N E F A S T U W R I S. For those who find it hard to spell, I'm sure I'm sure you can put like a link somewhere on the uh, <laughs> for everyone to, to reference. Yeah. So what, um, what what exactly is that? And you know, and how's that come about? Were you gonna Were you gonna be doing that anyway if you were still doing the Head by Hell Bastard gig? Yeah. Um, the fasterest basically that that started off as a as a side project thing while I was still doing Vindicator, uh, the UK one, not the American one. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I think it must have been about summer 2012, just uh, Chris, who was our guitar player, uh, kind of, we, we wanted to do a death metal thing. And we got together with a couple of people and had a, met up at the pub, spoke it over, and then Vindicator, I wouldn't say it took off necessarily, it flapped its wings frantically for a short while. So it never ended up, nothing ended up coming of it. Right. And I decided to kind of do, to just take it and do sort of like this thing by myself, like do a sort of, uh, sort of like a ter- terrorizer worship, I suppose. And I sat down and I, I wrote uh, the demo that we released that last year, Nothing Again. And I was like, okay, that's the polar opposite of what I wanted to do. I hang guess. on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can't let that slip by. Yeah. A yeah, demo, got, a demo a called Nothing one. to Gain. You think you're going to sneak Violence's third album title past me, did you? You got, you got the reference straight away, mate. You're only the third person to get that. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, um... I, you know, it, it's it's basically like heavy pop almost in places, and I kind of went okay. So it's pretty obvious that this wants to come out first, and um, and then uh, it was about oh, when did I write that? That must have been like 2014. I wrote that song, and so it must have been like that year or the year after that we got news about uh, the Snooty Fox in Wakefield, which I'm sure you're uh, familiar with. I ha- I'm, I'm familiar with, and yet I have never never been there, and I've never played there. Well, you would have done if Full Thrash Assault hadn't been cancelled last year, but we'll we'll yes. save that for another time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, well, well, no, no, Keith Platt would have played that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that prick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of me. Yeah. What an arsehole. <laughs> less, less said about that cunt, the better. <laughs> Call me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I've known Malcolm Shipman, uh, who who runs the place. I've known him for years. He's a really good friend, and obviously the place got shut down last year and um which was kind of kind of a kick in the teeth for a lot of people i think because the snooty fox was a bit of a hotbed for uh like midlands heavy metal it was a nice sort of central place that people could go to you know hang on on. on, wasn't it in wakefield yeah yeah yes don't ever call yorkshire the fucking midlands yes sir i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) that's it by the way that that was a bit of keith slipping in there down down south in in Wakefield, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, <laughs> fucking hell, Wakefield, the Midlands, fucking. Who else, who else could I piss off? Uh, <laughs> well, no, to be honest, to be fair, um, I, I would say that the Midlands, as a part of the UK, um, is head and shoulders the best moaning fans in metal. <laughs> yes, 
They, they, yes, it is. They fucking moan more than any. When are you playing the Midlands? Yeah, when are you playing the Midlands? And then you yeah. post. And then you post. Well, we played there two weeks ago. You fucking moaning bastards. Where, where were you, you shite house? Yeah, you know? absolutely. We played. Um, well, but funnily enough, it did work because we because we did Bromsgrove. We did you know the um, um, breaking bands thing. And, oh yeah. Um, and, and funnily enough, I, 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 met, I met four guys who, like, one of them had been moaning, saying, oh, you're not, when are you playing the Midlands? I was like, well, look, here's an idea. Click on that thing called Tour Dates, that tab on our Facebook page, and um, see the gig that we're doing in fucking Bromsgrove. And they were like, oh, right. And they, all four of them, bought tickets, showed up, and I bumped into them. And they were like, oh, right, yeah. And they reminded me of the conversation on Facebook. I was like, right, great. At least, but do you know what I mean? At least they acted on it. And sometimes, well, that makes a change, doesn't it? You know? sometimes, sometimes I think that people moan just for the fucking sake of moaning. Yeah, my response to that is usually shove your balls up your ass and quench yourself castrated. <laughs> um, I'm available for bar mitzvahs, birthday parties, weddings, funerals. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, if you call Nottingham the Midlands, we've played. You know, we've we, we've played uh, we played Nottingham. We played it like two years ago. Um, so yeah, so so yeah, Midlands do seem to be the 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 best moaners in the metal scene. It's the, it's it, Wakefield is like in the is like near the middle of our of our shitty little island. Okay, it's it's I'm generalising. I apologise. No, no, <laughs> it's it, it's all right. It's just that it's just that if if there's people if there is people listening to this in Yorkshire, which I'm sure there is, um, I so I you know, aneurysm right now. Well, no, I just I don't want them to track you down and hack your fucking head off. Okay. Because um, ah, well, that you know, you know, you know, you know what Yorkshiremen are like. He says, being one himself. <laughs> yeah, well, so so they say, you know, I've been up for years, so fucking, yeah, you know, I know exactly what Yorkshiremen are like. You know, they're a bunch of over over apolog over apologetic grumpy pissheads. <laughs> so what? So so to get to get back to how we wandered down this yes, this this fucking tangent. <laughs> Um, it's, which is well, my fault. It's called talking bollocks. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So. Well, it's, it's my fault. I couldn't. I couldn't let Wakefield and the Midlands go. Sorry, couldn't do it. Um, <laughs> so, but, so what happened with, this, with that one? You know what happened um, with Snooty Fox? Why did it get shut down? The council are a bunch of fucking assholes. That's why. But well, why else? Uh, well, you know? I mean, yeah, and you can say that for pretty much every town and city out there. What they they yeah. pulled the license? What you know? Yeah, there were, I, I don't remember the exact details, um, but I, I recall it being somewhere along the lines of sort of like he wanted to re Malcolm wanted to renew his license, and they I can't remember if they like didn't let him or they would let him, but they were going to take away half the shit that he had, if that makes sense, like yeah. half the stuff in his license. Yeah, and it just got to the point where I think he just kind of they just bullied him out of it at the end of it, and he and he didn't, and then he just got kind of served. a... Uh, I can't remember what the fuck it's called, like a like a closure notice. It's sort of one of those things where it's sort of like, you know, we're we're closing the site down and knocking it down, you don't have a choice but to fuck off. Basically. Oh right, so it's compulsory purchase basically. But That's well the not one. compulsory but, purchase order, thank you. But would he but I mean did it did, so so it, yeah, that's that just that just sucks from every possible angle. Yeah. He's relocated now. Uh, he had so the, so there is a Snooty Fox venue in Wakefield, it's just on the other side of the city. Right, but okay. That landed him with a fucking shitload of debt like a, a shitload of debt and uh, and he, I, I every single time i've seen him like since he first since trouble first started like a couple of years back he's just been it's just like it's just, it's just heartbreaking man it's like it's fucking it, no you no know, one deserves this you know yeah, yeah and the amount of memories that people have of the, the, the old snooty fox now it's like holy shit man you know we, when we had full thrash salt there for like 10 years and yeah. you know, I've been. To, we've all been to so many gigs there, and all this sort of thing. It's like, yeah, it's a sweaty little shithole, but it was our sweaty little shithole. <laughs> well, I, I, well, I had, I had, um, I had Chad, I had Chad um, Arnold from Global Thrash Assault on the podcast. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> yeah, Chad. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And that all that all came about from um, from uh, one of the, one of the uh, one of the bollockers, Paul, mentioning to me on in an email that um, that, he'd, that he'd come all the way, you know, he'd come all the way from the states. Um, yeah, going away from New York for that. That's right, and I was like, "Fucking what?" So I thought, "I've got to get, yeah. I've got to get this guy on." And then um, it turns out that I messaged him, 
and said, look, would you like to come on the podcast? And when I messaged him, he was actually in the UK and he, and he was, he's a list. He, he was, or is, I don't, I don't know if he still is, but he, he was a listener as well. Um, and it was, and it was so cool. And then, we, and then we got to talk and I found out that he was, he'd actually been in London for a few days. So, we, which is a real shame because we could have hooked up and all the rest of it. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're talking about something that, you know, people came, so, you know, well, people, at least one person came all the way from the States to, to, um, to see it. And that, and you know, for the local council to just have such a narrow, narrow minded yeah. fucking blinkered view is just really sad. On two occasions, I had my friend Christian coming over all the way from fucking Denmark to, to go to those shows, you know. It's like, because, cause you know, they were good shows at a really good venue. And, and, it's, and, that, and that was it. It was, it was a great venue for everyone. And it was like, you know, it, it was perfectly located that people from all over the country, or the world in some cases, could, could get there. Well, there was. And, well, just to give you an idea, I mean, a reanimator could could not speak highly enough of the management and all the rest of it. They 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 said it was just a great, it was really great experience. Um, yeah, those guys are wonderful. But to give you a um, uh, just a little um, insight, uh, there was a possibility at one point, um, and I we'd spoken to reanimator, and we <laughs> we actually had we actually had the lineup. And there was a there was a possibility that we were actually going to rock up, and we were going to walk on and play goddess, and then walk off again. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, and that was going to be totally un totally 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 unpromoted, unmentioned anywhere. It was going to be one of those things that we just do and then see what comes after it. But we yeah, there was there was a point where. We were we were going to go on and just play one song. Reanimate. We're, we're all cool with it and everything else. Um, that would have been rad. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It, and it was it we it was di- you know it was very much very much discussed at the time. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was just like that. Would, it, it, yeah, it, it didn't happen obviously. But um, yeah, that's oh, that's really sad, man. Yeah, but. As a result, it's sort of like, because I was still thinking of doing this Nefastorous thing. Oh, well done. You've got us back on topic. Nice one. Yeah, see, I bring it full circle. Yeah. I've done interviews. <laughs> yeah, I, well, at, at, at least one of us is vaguely professional. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> well, believe it or not, in this, b- b- it. believe it or not, in this case, it's you. <laughs> oh, Christ, man. Just, yeah, just put, the, put the bar in Satan's wine cellar, why don't you? Um <laughs> As I was saying, but no, because I, I had like some songs written for the Nefastorous thing, and I was like, okay, I I think I want to do this to kind of help Malcolm out, you know. And I, I pitched it to a few people, just kind of behind the scenes, and just said, if I were to do this, like, would you be interested in contributing something to it? And it's like I think at the moment the total number of people who are guesting on the album is so far eighteen. Wow! And uh, wow, it's been amazing actually it's it's taken a long fucking time to get done because obviously i've had hell bastard i've had work i've had you know i mean in a, i've had two i've had two kids since i started writing the album and not per, not myself my my partner has but you know, yeah you know. <laughs> yeah and um yeah it, it's, it's taken a while but it's uh it's, it's nearly there thank fuck i can actually say that now you know <laughs> oh that's that's awesome man and, and you were saying so, it, so it, sorry I'm, I, I think i might be a little confused you're saying this is this is like a heavy pop album no, actually, it, like, but the first song I wrote was like a heavy pop out, a uh, heavy pop song. You know, in fact, we released it last year as a single along with a along with a carnival cover, which is just me and a drum machine, basically. You what? You did a carnival? Which song? Male supremacy. Oh fucking hell! I, I, honestly, I how have you not I, heard that? It's been out for a year. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. How have I not heard it? Because the internet is such a small place. Um, I'll tell you what. I will send it to you, yes. and you can fucking play it on your show. Oh, f- oh, that would be fucking. Now I, I can, as long as you haven't, as long as it's not registered, and I'm going to get fucking a uh, copyright no, claim no, against no. me. It's because I put that up on Bandcamp as a pay what you want thing, and all of the money that we got from it, which was sixty fucking quid actually, which is surprising, went has gone towards the Ronnie James Dio Cancer Fund. Awesome. Well, look, I yeah, I, I mean, yeah. everybody listening, I'm no doubt will will go and download a copy and uh, and and send you the money. So that's another four quid. Um, there you go. <laughs> and um, uh, no, brilliant. Yeah, do send it. And I will play it because oh man, 
I had I had a cassette back in the day, and I, I had terrible certainty on one side and retaliation on the other. And I used to, and and it was about an hour and a half walk to my girlfriend's house, or about an hour. And I used I used to be able to get through one of the albums halfway through the 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 next, and then I'd arrive at her house. We'd hang out, you know, fumble in her bedroom, whatever. And then and then I would um, uh, walk home. And listen to that cassette again. So pick up, listen to half an album, and then listen to an album. Do you know what I mean? That that and that that yeah yeah take, it was like half and half yeah yeah. But it just gets get, kept getting swapped round because they were just two such legendary albums at the time. Well, it's funny you should mention retaliation. I'm going to get onto that later. Oh, you are? Well, no, get onto it now. Mm, well, but I, I want to finish off my my thought first. I don't, never mind. I'll get onto it now. I've forgotten what I, where I was going with it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and don't worry, we'll get back to it. Well, no, I rem- sorry, no, I have remembered my thought. No, I was going to say because nothing again. The song again, yeah. violence, as you say, that came out as a as a heavy pop song. Basically, it's a, it's like the structures and everything are very poppy and uh, with carnivore influence. I've made my career out of ripping off Pete Steel. I'm not stopping now. Um, <laughs> and it was like, okay, this kind of wants to come out first. And then I wrote something else that was basically death metal. Right. And then I wrote, so, and it's sort of like so. It's not a thrash album necessarily. It kind of like there's some thrash stuff on there. There's some death metal stuff on there. There's some kind of borderline pop shit on there. You know, it kind of it's a little bit of everything, but it's somehow kind of all sounds like it belongs on the same release, if that makes sense. Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? It doesn't sound like a compilation of different shit. You know, like here's the pop song, here's the death metal one. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's it just it came out the it came out how it came out. That's exactly it. Yeah, and it's just sort of like okay, well, I guess this sort of like grind thing that I was going to do is, is going to have to take the back seat until I get this out of the way, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, no, absolutely. But no, that's so, cool, uh, man, that's cool. So, so retaliation. Yes, uh, that turns 30 this year. Uh, it does, and did you see there was a, did you see there was a live performance, or there's about to be a live performance? Yeah, there was a live performance from uh, Mark, who's, uh, who's actually uh, half putting the band back together, he announced yesterday, actually. Wow, um, that's him news. And, him and Louis are getting back together and doing uh, something called Carnivore AD. Wow. And they're going to be touring around the place, which I was fucking ecstatic for, because Mark's new band, Circus of Steel, is fucking mind-blowing. Really? Yeah, it, it, they did a song called uh, The Down... He, he released a song recently called The Downfall, and it's just sort of like... One of those one of those things where I'm just where you listen to it and kind of go, man, I really wish that I'd written that. <laughs> well, I'm go- I am going to have to search all this out the minute we the minute. Uh, I'll send it. I'll send it all to you once we're done, mate. Don't worry. Oh, about it. awesome! Fucking awesome! I'm, I'm a nice. I'm a nice guy. Aren't you? Well, look. But, I, well, I've got. I've got. A, uh, funny enough, when we finish this, I've got a long walk to the uh, to a, to a station to go and get the um, uh, to go and get myself um, uh, up, off to uh, go and pick my car up, which is being fixed. So uh, it'll be. It'll, I'll I'll have my earbuds in for a good kind of like hour. So yeah, send it all over. Oh, there you go. You'll be, you've got listening material then. <laughs> oh, this sounds uh, and yeah, I'm genuinely excited. I'm genuinely excited to hear your version of Male Supremacy, but all the other stuff as well. well that's, that's fucking brilliant. Thank that, you, man. That's what I'm getting to because because Mark pointed out a couple of months ago now that Retaliation is turning thirty this year. I thought I can't just sit by and let one of my favourite albums turn thirty without doing something for it. So. I'm going to be releasing another EP single thing on Bandcamp with two covers from Retaliation on it and a demo of one of the songs from the album. Awesome. And that's going to be free. Um, so we've, uh, there's going to be a cover of uh, SMD, which has got uh, my friend David Ingram. Uh, the other one, not me. I'm not just talking to myself in third person. Yeah. Uh, he's done vocals on it. So good. And Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, what was it? What was the other one? I did five billion dead as well. Awesome. I recorded. It. In, fact, in fact, I think five billion dead's on my SoundCloud. You did. You, so you didn't. You didn't attempt Jesus Hitler then. No, I. I, I you know, I was going to do it because uh, <laughs> Jesus, because I was going to do a medley of race war and Jesus Hitler. But then, given that they say, I thought that might be in a little bit of bad taste. Uh, yeah, yeah, ever ever so slightly, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I look. I can I can knock together a version of Jack Daniels and Pizza for you. No problem. <laughs> I, could, I mean, I could, pro- I, I could, pro- I could probably do that by tonight. <laughs> you know, I included that in. I actually included Jack Daniels and Pizza in the Male Supremacy cover I did. Oh, did you? Yeah, I, I, you know, when, I, when, I, when you'll hear it when I send it to you. I was going to uh, say, I've got, uh, I've, I've got, I've got you, I've got you chucking up down the bog um, to look forward to. Have I? 
No, no, I used the original recording, but I used it in an interesting way. Oh, right, so, okay, I look forward to that, then. A few, a few, I, I played it to a couple of hardcore carnivore fans I know, and, and they, just, they just fell about laughing, because they were just like, that's perfect. <laughs> and all it was was to cover up a mistake, and it just fits so well that it was like, okay, let's just keep that. So, <laughs> awesome. Oh, so but that, that, that happens so much. That happens so often, doesn't it? Mm. Um, and funnily, funnily enough, I, I, did, I, I had that exact same experience in the studio uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was, I'm, I was, I was doing a guest appearance on um, someone's done a cover of an Acid Rain song um, for, for an album, and I, and I went along and did um, uh, and and kind of you know me and the uh, me and their singer did alter you know alternate lines and um, yeah. And then, um, uh, and the producer said, "Okay, you can come in. We're done." Uh, and no, and he said, "No, that was it." He goes, um, "He goes." Um, I said, "Right, well, we're done." And he goes, "But there's still a minute and a half of, of there's still a minute and a half of the song left." I went, yeah, right. I, I went, yeah, 1987, mate. And he just burst out laughing, and he goes, "Oh God, like he goes, if only you'd, I'd, I'd had that on tape." That be... I goes, "Right, well, let's do it again." So, um, so he just play, played the end of it, played the end, and I just go like at the end, I just go nineteen eighty seven, mate, old school. And um, uh, but again, like I say, it was just, it was just, it was not not a, a fuck up per se, but it's just one of those things that happens where you go, right, let's have that studio magic. That's the one. Studio magic. Inspira- inspiration. 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 Saxophone. It's a bit of a. Yeah. It's, um, it's it's one of the. Well, look, this this new stuff sounds really interesting. You know, I mean, you've set out to do something, and and someone else has come out of it. Well, it's just, uh, that, that that's all, all the best stuff always comes from that, doesn't it? So. Um, well, absolutely. You just do what you do, um, and 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 figure it out afterwards. I mean, it's like I'm like I'm always saying. People will be sick of hearing about it, but you know, you when whenever you're recording stuff, you know, it's like the last time you listen to it before it's released. Well, that's that's the last time it's yours because the minute it's yeah. released, it's not yours, and you are going to be told what the influences are, and you are going to be told what it means. And and to be fair, I I think that I think I think that's absolutely spot on because I think as a as a um, a musician. Um, it's it, 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 you know you you can think that you've done a tribute to so and so, or you can think that these are the influences. But to be honest, you're so close to it that might be you know you might have taken the structure of somewhere else, or you might have done this, or you might have done that. But ultimately, it's the listener that will tell you what you've produced. Yeah, but it's it, everyone wears their influences on their sleeve. Mm. You know. Well, I'm. I, 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 no, it's none I, more apparent than it is on the album than the Fastest album. Let me tell you that. Fucking hell. Well, I know. I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd challenge that. I'd, I'd, I'd say that. I'd say that um, some bands. I think the best bands don't. I mean, I think personally that's why Hardwired to Self Destruct is so disappointing. Is that you know I've, I've seen loads of comments of people saying, "Oh, there's like there's great. There's lots of Sabbath on it, and lots of." And it's like, whoa, 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 hang on. Since when did we listen to Metallica albums and start going, "Oh, that's a bit Sabbath, and that's a bit that, and that bit"? It's like, no, they've always been the sum of their. They've been the sum of their influences, which created Metallica. We're going backwards if we're starting to be able to fucking see the influences. If they're that on open and bare, it means they've stopped becoming the sum of their influences and just become really you know just become like you know paying tribute to bands they like and that's for me why you know any band is like i mean for me that's a problem with a lot of modern uh, sorry a lot of modern a lot of new school thrash is for me i just can't i can't listen to it because it just sounds like a, a fucking tribute band that's something you know what I, i'm glad you brought that up because that's something that i've <laughs> i get a lot of flack for you know oh really <laughs> Yeah, well, I've because I've always been one of these people to, that's always said it's like listen, it, a friend a friend of mine once said to me many years ago, and it's always stuck with me that a band that does nothing that listen to Slayer is only going to know one thing, and that's how I sound like Slayer. That's fine if you do it well, but you know we've already got like these eight eight million Slayer sound alikes over here. What are you doing that means that people have to go to you above them? Well, the thing is that the thing is that you know, if only if 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 all you ever listen to is Slayer, you're going to sound like Slayer, and that's what Slayer do. Exactly. So, so and, and, and so like, yeah, and what, no, I'm what, I'm exactly the same. What 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 what's your what's your you know what's what's your shtick apart from we sound like Slayer? Yeah, you and fifty thousand other bands and Slayer. You know, fucking, 
it's like, yeah, okay, we, we get it. You like Slayer. How about, you know, put your own twist on it onto the same thing? Well, exactly. You know, you've exactly. got to have your, a sense of identity to it. Otherwise, you're just sort of like, okay, let's, let's file that under Slayer Tribute Act number 67. You know, <laughs> uh, well, absolutely, because basically what you've done is like, oh, well, you know, our main influence is Slayer. We very much think of ourselves as like, you know, as that kind of band. And it's like, right, well, you've just set the bar <laughs> impossibly high, you know. So basically what you're saying is that um, you're never going to be as good as your main influence, you know, because you aren't. It's not, it's not going to happen. Um, yeah. And um, it, it, yeah, it, it's I'm all about let's take it forward. Let's move forward. Let's, you know. We, it's, I mean, seeing, and also, again, you know, you see, I see, like, promo shots of, of, um, uh, you know, the, uh, new school thrash bands, and, you know, they're wearing, they're wearing fucking, you know, high techs and skinny jeans and suicidal tendencies baseball caps, and, and I'm just thinking, (laughs) guys, we're so, how the fuck are we going to move forward (laughs) if you're dressing like it's 1989? I fucking love that. Oh, it's so good. I, lo- I, lo- I love that aesthetic so much. It's just like, yeah, okay, we get it. You're a thrash band. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. And they've got, and they've got their pristine uh, creator Pleasure to Kill t-shirt like, on. Totally. It looks like it was printed like that day. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like, oh, guys, look, you know, bless you. Yeah, I know this is what you, you know, I know you love those bands and all the rest of it, but... What are you bringing to the table? Because I look at I look at a picture like that and I'm like, right, I already know what your music sounds like, and it sucks. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, we, we don't need any more of that. Thank you. You know, I'm never gonna I'm never gonna give anyone shit for liking that stuff. No, not at all. Stuff, not at all. Not at all. If you're doing it well, fine. You know, if you're doing it well, okay, but don't expect to be sort of like game changers because at the end of the day, everyone else has already done it and they've done it better. Well, so. yeah, not only that, but ultimately, I, I don't, I don't want to say, oh, I don't want to listen to the, to uh, to a, a new school thrash band that basically sounds like they've sat and they've catalogued Slayer, Nuclear Assault, Dark Angel, Metallica um, riffs, and they've basically catalogued those riffs, rearranged them, thrown in, thrown in some absolutely standard lyrics. There'll be one about the pit. There'll be a song about <laughs> global warming. Um, you know, all about of, nuclear war. Yeah, yeah, all the fucking thrash tropes. You know, and and it's just like, what what what's the fucking point? What and what they're doing is what killed thrash the first time round. People think yeah. it was death metal. It wasn't. Thrash failed to innovate. Thrash died. Right. It and and it killed itself. And then and then I get accused of saying, oh, thr- thrash never died. It never. Di-. Okay, it didn't die, but it went to fucking sleep. <laughs> it went to a fucking coma. Yeah, yeah. It, it went into. Yeah, it did go into a coma. A coma of souls. Boom! Madam. You know, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so glad to hear to hear this coming from someone else that's not me. <laughs> you know, like someone else fucking gets it, you know. Yeah. Well, I, somebody the other day who said to me, "Oh, thrash hasn't. Di- I'm, I'm not interested in any new thrash. I, I just blast stuff from the eighties. I, I just blast stuff from the eighties. I think, well, that's great. That's that's really going to keep everything moving forward, isn't it? I mean, how the fuck does that help? Oh, you know, I'm not interested. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested, you know. And then there's other people who say, oh, there's no good new bands around. There is good new bands around. There is new good thrash bands around. Um, but, you, you know, it, it, it's, you've just, you've just, you've just got to go find them. You've got to really look for them, yeah. And I think that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the difficult thing as well, because the ones who really have done something that's quite interesting uh, tend to just get buried amongst the shit, you know? yeah. It's like you know, no one's gonna no one's gonna wade through a sewer to find a fucking diamond ring that they flushed down the bog. It's not worth it, you know. Well, the thing is, as well, is that there's there is just so much music out there now that it's um, a commodity. Yeah, it, it's basically well, it's, it's the internet. You know, I mean, you've yeah. got you you. I mean, you could spend every day of your life, all day, every day, on the net looking for new music and finding stuff. Um, you know, I mean, you've and I frequently do. <laughs> yeah, well, they, well, yeah, you got the time, haven't you? Oh yeah. So have I. <laughs> so, um, well, it's, uh... but yeah, it, it, it is, yeah, and and also, I just think ultimately, you're one step up from a tribute band. If that's, what, I mean, just because you're saying like you play original stuff, you know, and you've got and you've got, you know, you're only one, you're only one, you're only one step removed from basically being a thrash tribute band. Yes, yeah, 
And I think I think I think, like, I think especially like you say with the ones who have their pearly white high tops and their skinny ripped jeans and their fucking flip caps or whatever that that's going like okay musically I can kind of understand it but going for the aesthetic as well not many people can really pull that sort of thing what do you kiss you know fuck it because yeah. that's what it is it's the same thing isn't it you know well I I, I get offered a lot of um, I get a lot of uh, offered a lot of bands to like oh you know would you be interested in talking to these and it's like you know I'll get the I'll, I'll get the, they'll send the album over and the promo shots and you look at the promo shots and think I know what this is going to sound like the answer's already no and then you put it on <laughs> and go oh fuck me what a surprise I was absolutely spot on it's a no um, yeah. I'm, I'm, look, I'm not completely narrow minded I will I'll listen to anyone and anything I'm I, I'm you know I'm I uh, you know I'm I'm you know I'm predisposed to like stuff not dislike it you give um, anything a go once. Yeah, absolutely. Apart from cancer, um, uh, but you know, um, it, it's just one of those things. I'm not. I'm. I. I. I just sometimes think, oh fuck me. I know what this is going to be. Yeah, it, it, I think. I think uh, it's worse when you when you look at an album and you see the cover and then you look at the song titles on the back and you just go, I know exactly how this is going to sound. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I went and played Slovenia the other month. I got given an album by a friend of mine a review, and uh, it has <laughs> it has a song on it called uh, "Discarded Existence," and I'm sort of like, "That's a thrash album, isn't it?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Straight away. Yeah, yeah. I'm but, su- uh, I'm surprised that's not the name of the band. It's <laughs> the name of the album, actually. Yeah, but I'm surprised yeah. it's not the name of the band. I got to be honest. Um, who... There'll be a band called Discarded Existence somewhere. There will be. Yeah, there's got to be, really, isn't there? But um, but but as I was as I, my my original point for we went off on another massive tangent, my friend. Yes. Uh, but it's like I I I have worn my, like inadvertently worn my influences on my sleeve. Uh, apart from one song, which uh, is that one that's coming out on the Retaliation EP, because it was written literally as a fucking tribute to Carnivore. You know that was the point of the song. Right. Uh, musically, anyway. In fact, yeah. at one point we joked that we were just going to play each riff from Retaliation once in sequence, and that was going to be the song. Um. And it's certainly listen back to it, and it's like, yeah, okay. So it's very apparent that this is influenced by this, but it's like you, you always try and put your own twist on it. Yeah, you know, you sort of try and keep people guessing. That's the thing. If you're getting people going, it's going to do this next, and it's like, okay, right, you know, I saw that coming a mile off. And then there's the other side of that where they're like, fuck, I really hope that it's about to do this. You know, they're two very separate things. So if you need to kind of subvert expectations with with what you're doing. Did you see what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. And, it's, uh, and, and that's something that's... But then it kind of goes full circle with me because then I, I think way too much on that sort of thing and then it just goes full circle and becomes pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> and after a while, obviously, when people get used to what you're doing, they're going to expect the unexpected. So you really have to kind of go, all right, well, you know, halfway through the song, it's just going to cut into white noise. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things on there that I'm hoping will uh, really show. I mean, every, everyone who I've, uh, like I said, got on board for, for the album to to do stuff on it have, have really, really, really been into it. You know, they're sort of like, this is, really, this is quite different. We're quite enjoying this. I'm, I'm so, looking forward to hearing it. Well, I want you on it, sir. Ooh, that's exciting. But not, not necessarily singing. Right. I will message you about this afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, I'll, I'll 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 take that as some I'll take that as some strange backhanded compliment. <laughs> good God, I don't no, want, no, no, good no, God, no, I don't no, want no, you no. singing on it. Oh, yes, I, no, it's nothing like that. Don't worry, no, no, I've got something <laughs> a little more interesting in mind. <laughs> awesome. But, um, yeah, well, it's you know I'm, I'm just trying to. It, it's it's good as well because because I, I it is for a good cause because we're we're not making any fucking money off this. All the proceeds are going to Malcolm to help pay off the debt that was incurred on him from the Snooty Fox, you know. Right. And I just did my thing and it happened to be something that was in that people people apparently think is quite interesting and different. And so they, you know, there's so many like I say, eighteen guests at the moment, I think it stands at. And Well it's, it's well it's yeah. gonna be nineteen soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, cool. Well look that, that seems like an ideal that seems like an ideal place to leave it so we can have that conversation now. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. All right. Well, look, um, Dave. Thank you very much for coming on. It's um, it's always no, a, thank it's you for always, having me, mate. Not at all. Good it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, and I, I, in fact, I, I can't remember. I can't remember the last time we did get a chance to chat. Uh, uh, years. 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like years. properly, it's been it's been a good few years at least. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, it's uh, th- thanks for coming on, and um, I'm looking forward to all this music you're going to send me. And I'm now going to stop recording and find out this strange offer that you have for me. <laughs> you Th- stop recording. Uh, I'm going to stop now. Thanks a lot, mate. No problem, mate. Thank you. And there you go. That was um, that was my chat with Dave. And um, what a thoroughly, thoroughly nice chap and uh, very interesting um, discussions going on there. And um, yeah, you know, what can I say? Uh, sometimes health and safety is um, is a very sensible thing to have. Um, but um, anyhow. Uh, I, look, I, again, uh, thanks to Dave for for doing that because um, um, it, you know it's it, there was a uh, there, there's there's a certain way you've got to approach these subjects and um, you know we both agreed we didn't want it all to be about rebellion and and the mess that occurred there um, but a cool you know some cool things becoming and also the Killian on command stuff you know is is still in the works so I'll keep you updated on that um, so moving on. Um, uh, <laughs> Any of you, um, any of you have noticed, uh, well, will, will have noticed that I, I don't have songs on the end of the podcast anymore, and I've explained why, so I can monetize the podcast um, um, uh, a little better. And guess what? Oh, yeah. I have had, I have, I have had um, uh, copyright orders from the record label that owns the copyright on um, the Acid Rain stuff, because we, we signed with Candlelight for five years for the um, Apple Core archives. Then they got taken over by Universal, um, and which means they, they, you know, they own, fair dues, they own the copyright, but um, what they've done is they've been blocking, well, they haven't been blocking, but they've been making copyright infringement notices against the Acid Rain YouTube channel so basically meaning that we can't monetize any of our songs because they're saying oi you can't use this you don't have the copyright hang on we're the band and guess what oh yeah the that little creative restraint sting that you heard da, 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 yeah that's enough to get copyright infringement notices against the fucking podcast all of a sudden all of a sudden so straight away i thought right okay so I got to universal and said well where are the fucking royalties then you're so busy going around warning everybody, where are the bloody royals? I could not believe it. After all this time, all of a sudden, just when I stopped putting a song on the end of the podcast, I got bloody my own record label telling me that I can't use my own music because I don't have permission. Well, fucking give me permission then, you cunts. I've actually been very good about it. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I know, they've been all right. But it was just, I mean, it's just the, the, the fucking hoops that you've got to jump through to get all this sorted. It's just fucking stupid. Um, uh, anyway, um, yeah, uh, Jamie Jaster, the podcast, really enjoying it. I mean, you know, the, the, the dude knows what he's talking about. Certainly from a business point of view, you know, he's been around many, lo- you know, he, he's a considerably greater level of success that I have and um, yeah I've, I've just really just been really enjoying the podcast that's it really I just thought I'd mention it because I, I know I've kind of said that I wasn't a fan in the past but you know I'm wrong I'm wrong there you go I said it you heard it correctly I said I'm wrong um, what else has been going on um, I guested on an acid rain um, on uh, a band have done a um, an interpretation of Goddess by Acid Rain, and um, I uh, I guested on it vocally, um, uh, which, which is again all these kind of like interesting little bits and pieces of stuff I've been able to do. Now I'm kind of like you know a lot freer to do stuff. So again, that has been really really cool. Doing more comedy you might see me up and down the country as well. Um, Leicester and Stoke are on my list. Um, in fact, yeah, why don't, why, don't actually, why don't I actually bloody plug it? Um, obviously, this is completely irrelevant if you're listening to this podcast you know 10 years from now whatever who the fuck knows what i'll be doing 10 years from now eh we'll probably be i don't know will will youtube exist will any of this exist will we just be i don't know how how will the internet even be there will we have moved totally into just social networks and shit like that now we'll be having a pill instead of eating food will we be will we even be shagging anymore will we just be you know jizzing in trays <laughs> jizzing in trays there you go um yeah <laughs> so anyway i a bit of a tangent there i'm playing uh, i'm playing stoke in fact burslem um robbie williams hometown folks on uh, september 30th um at the ruffle comedy club that's r-o-f-l comedy club um yeah look it up if you want to come along and um say hello to myself and mr keith platt i'm sure he'd be pleased to see you as would i um 
so what else been going on? Oh yeah, um, uh, look, I, look, I know. I wish I'd never said I've got. There's going to be this great James Murphy special because now everybody's hammering me, going, "Where the fuck is it?" I've just had a lot on and crazy priorities this month. Um, it is going to be coming up very soon. Um, I'm sure you'll really enjoy it. It's very cool. Um, he's a very cool dude, and we had a really, really long chat, as I've already said. So, you know, very cool. Um, now, something I do want to mention before I uh, uh, I go on to um, uh, do introduce the next interview, which is with Mike Alvord of Holy Terror. Um, I, I just, yeah. Um, King 810 or King 810 or King of shit or absolute pile of fucking wank whatever you want to call them right um, one of them was uh, was had up on a weapons charge and uh, but they, they put out a statement basically trying to make out like they were absolute heroes for saying despite that we are still going to make our, we're still going to make our bloodstock appearance do you know what I mean? Like, wow, that's really big of them, isn't it? Go ahead, despite the tragedy of one of them being charged with being an irresponsible, gun-toting asshole. What the f- yeah. The more I hear about that f- fucking band, the more I want to fucking really find out how hard they are. I really do. I really... Hey, are you, are you hard? You're really hard, are you? Okay, I'm going to get in my car. I'm going to drive at you at 60 miles an hour. You're not allowed to move. Let's see how hard you are. Is the car going to have a massive dent in it, or are you going to be fucking dead? It's going to be interesting finding out. I mean, they played Bloodstock. Um, I know some people enjoyed them, and you're allowed. If you like King 810, good for you. Good for you. You know, that's 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 your bag. Personally, me, I'd rather stick fucking shit in my ears than ever listen to that pile of wank again. I'd rather not bother with one guy, one guy's obsession with how hard he is. It's just, it's just not interesting to me. And basically, babbling. I mean, I'm sure the band just go away and record the music without him. And he goes, "No, oh, hey, don't, don't worry, guys, don't worry. I got it. Don't worry. I got loads of crazy stories. I got all sorts of fucking stuff I can talk about. I can just gonna spew my life out over the top of your music without any fucking consideration whatsoever of the beats or the the beats or the rhythms or the melodies or any kind of fucking shit like that. I'm just gonna vomit my fucking life." All over the music, talking about all this fucking shit I did, all this shit I done, and all this crazy fucking. I'm not a new. I'm not from New York. I'm not. I'm not from New York. I'm not Jewish, but this accent's fucking all over the place. It's going. It's going all around the fucking world. This. I'm all over the map here. But fuck it, guys. Just, just, just send me the fucking music. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a motherfucking fuck. I'm just gonna fucking tell it how it fucking is, man. I'm gonna get my gun out. I'm going, I'm, I'm even going to go down south and become, become a fucking redneck now. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what part of the country I'm from. Any minute I may turn up in Austin, Texas and fucking drown. That's, that's probably a little bit too far, but you, you get the idea. It's just a fucking, it's just him and his ego, jibber, oh, I've said jibber jabber enough on this podcast, that's the last one, but it's him and his fucking ego, just all over the, just all over the music, there's, there just does seem to be no consideration for the rest of the band whatsoever, it's literally right, right, I've got the music, right, now it's all about me, all of a sudden, he's from Yorkshire, um, okay, that's enough of my, um, uh, uh, irresponsible mouth action, now it's time for an interview with Mike Alvord from, um, uh, Holy Terror, which I absolutely loved, as you're going to hear. Um, they are bringing out, um, well, both their albums. There's only two real proper albums, and then there's a, another one. But um, you're going to hear all about it. They're bringing them out. Um, Mind Wars, for me, is one of the most underestimated albums ever in metal. Not just in thrash or any, uh, ever in metal. Um, it's superb. It really is. Sure, the production's dated. I mean, to be honest, it, it didn't sound great at the time. But, you know, I'm not so much a fan of Terror and Submission, but Mind Wars is incredible. Um, and, I, you know, and I, it's not that I don't like Terror and Submission. I just, it's just, it's very difficult to live up to the awesomeness that is Mind Wars. But anyway, and that's also the name of Mike's current band. So why don't we sit back, chill out, get yourself a cigar, get yourself a line of Coke, get yourself a bottle of Jack, whatever it is that, you know, that gets you in the mood. 
Maybe it's nothing. Maybe you're walking down the street thinking, easy, Howard, I'm going to be at work at five minutes. Stop so being, being so irresponsible. Just because you don't have a job to go to doesn't mean the rest of us don't. Good point, fictional person walking down the road. Let's get on with the interview. Hi. Hey, Howard. Can you hear me? Oh, oh, oh brilliant. Yes. <laughs> at last. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was that was killing me. It's crazy, right? I mean, but it is. It's, it, it, we we rely on this stuff so much, but yet it's still finicky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've just I've and, and seriously, I mean, I'm I'm the king of fucking these things up, and um, <laughs> and and, um, and that was a, that was new level of fuckage for me. So um, <laughs> yeah, dear me. Um, so, hell, how are you? Good, good, good. Awesome, awesome. Right now, um, let's start off with we'll get all. I'll get all the we've met, we've met in a previous life shit out of the way first. Okay, um, all right. So, so me and you um, have been were label mates for two albums. Um, I um, I used to stopped for twenty five years and started again uh, two years ago. Sang in a UK thrash band called Acid Rain, and. Um, uh, we did a few albums back in the late eighties, early nineties, on the same label as you, um, uh, under one flag, via Music wow. for Nations, and um, and I actually met you in I think nineteen eighty five at the Nottingham Garage where you <laughs> Heresy, Napalm Death, you yep. guys, and DRI. That was a brilliant show. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so you took twenty five years off because I did too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, well, I spent I spent twenty of them doing stand up comedy. So um, wow, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So now I do them together. I do. I basically, you know, uh, uh, it's uh, you know, play a few songs and then just you know, take the piss for a bit. <laughs> That's great. So um, so yeah, it's, it's um, it, it's uh, yeah. So it's a long time. That was a that was a fucking killer show, man. Um, Oh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, and it, and the thing is as well is that I, you look back on it now and eat at the time. I mean, you read that you read that as a bill now. I mean, heresy, um, napalm death, UDRI, and you think, oh shit, yeah, exactly. It's like, well, hang on, that bill's like upside down all around. There's 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 <laughs> there's punk, there's hardcore, there's metal, there's like, what the fuck's going on here? But if, right. you, if you take that back, to, if you take that back to all the way back to 1985. That changes to what the fuck is going yep. on here? <laughs> you know? Way ahead of our time, right? Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Way way ahead of those crossover tours. Possibly the first yeah. crossover tour of its kind in this country. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was, I agree. Uh, Definitely uh, out here too. It was. It was just like low ceiling, uh, low ceiling. All bands going for it. I remember the the sweat dripping off the ceiling, like oh, it, like like it was, it was water. Yep. Well, it's funny because I have a photo of that show, and I think it's Napalm Death that's on stage, but I, I'm not positive. But I'll have to, uh, I'll have to see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, it, it's um, well, what a show! What a show! Um, I mean, yeah, just amazing. So there you go. That's all the. Um, that is all the uh, all the the reminiscing. That's that, us being two old men out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but um, so this um, this whole um, I mean you know let's get let's get straight down to the meat and potatoes because why we're talking is um, you're re-releasing all of your um, uh, Holy Terror albums and um, yeah. that's awesome um, you know I mean uh, there's I, I already I posted links on my on the the podcast Facebook page and people are already talking about it and it's a very welcome surprise um, and um, uh, you know. Thanks for doing this more than anything. Absolutely, else. absolutely. It's 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 a pleasure actually to hear that people still care. You know. Yeah. No, Holy, absolutely. Holy Terror is sort of uh, is is was very underground, but I think there's a legacy that continues, which is nice. Um, well, definitely one of the definitely one of the unsung heroes. I think I think you're the kind of band. Like I said, immediately as I posted when I posted it on Facebook, I had two people there straight away going. Uh, so underrated. Love this band. Been waiting for this to happen for years. You know, gonna buy the vinyl, the CDs, the whatever. Um, That's awesome. And and I, I I think without a doubt, you know, it's like you know, unsung heroes. Um, uh, sort of culty. Are you, always reminded me of kind of like an underground hardcore flotsam and jetsam for some reason. <laughs> that's, that's that's actually that's actually a pretty good analogy, I think. 
Well, I, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I always think, you know, being in a band myself, I always think when you're in the band, um, it, it, it actually makes it difficult for you to be able to sort of like categorize in any way your music because to you it's just your music. You actually need other people to tell you what it's like. Yeah, no, I agree because we we didn't know what the heck we were doing. We we just knew that we worked together and we worked together very well, which was which was really cool about it because. We all came from extremely different backgrounds, um, different age ranges. I mean, I think at the time I was 18 or 19, and I think Keith was probably 28, 29. So that's a big um, that's a big age gap at, at that at, at, as well, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It really is, but it just worked for some reason. We all clicked on a certain level, and um, I think that was kind of the beauty of it. Unfortunately, it was short lived. Yes, yeah, because that's that's the other thing that that kind of adds. Well, so can you so can you help me out with El Revengo and tell me exactly what that is and why it came out and how? Yeah, so the the you know Kurt and I lost touch probably mid nineteen eighty nine, and we didn't reconnect. It was through two guys online when when the internet was just coming about. Um, with MySpace, and yeah. there was a guy named there was a guy named Tom Hutchinson, who um, created this like little fan page, and it had his three favorite bands, and I, I think one was Armored Saint, I can't remember the other one, and then one was Holy Terror, and so I reached out to him. He had a contact information, and we started chatting, and then um, he met this guy named Scott Lambert, who created the Holy Terror Speedmetal dot com page, and then that's when Kurt and I got reconnected. Right. And so Kurt, you know, we, we chatted via, um, via email, um, back then. And he mentioned that he wanted to put out sort of a compilation type thing, you know, with, with a bunch of different remix songs and some live stuff. And coincidentally, I was working on, um, bringing all the live footage I had on tape on DVR tape to digital Ah, and I told right. him I had it, and I said, hey, I'd be willing to work on some sort of DVD for this if you want it. And he said, yeah, absolutely. And so that, that was it. I mean, I, I really didn't have a whole lot to do with it. Um, I only got a copy of it because this guy, Scott Lambert, bought one and sent it to me because I, I didn't even have one at the time when it right. came out. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, so, so that coming out is really, it's, it's for the completists, really. It's like yes. there's, there's nothing there apart from the live stuff, and it's always great to hear live stuff. But by the looks of it, you've managed to kind of capture it all and, and, and put it exactly where you need it, which is yep. in a package that is going to, well, in a package that is kind of, what I think is a, is a fan's wet dream. It's just absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it came out really nice, and uh, even the remixes sound good. Uh, and it, and it kind of gives you a little a little backstory of some of the live stuff, you know, that that I think people never never saw that that weren't that didn't have a chance to see us live back then. Yeah, yeah, and and of course, um, I mean, it, it's just very very sad that that Keith's not around um, to see all of this as well. It is. Um, so he and I actually, when, when El Revengo was starting to go, um, no one knew where Keith was. And um, it was the efforts of, of Scott Lambert, Kurt, and this guy, Chris Carlson, who eventually found him living with his family in Las Vegas. And so he and I actually spoke on the phone probably three, four times in 2006. And, you know, he asked about, you know, am I still playing? And I asked if he was still singing. And, and I told him I had a bunch of material. And, and uh, it just never materialized. We, we kind of lost touch again. And then, I don't know, I think it was five or so years later, I found out that um, he was suffering from cancer. And it was just, it was a devastating blow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... Um... It, I, I remember um, I remember at the time hearing the news. And I, and I you know, whilst looking up and... Uh, you guys um, uh, and specifically what have you been up to and we'll obviously we'll get onto Mind Wars uh, in a minute but um, I couldn't believe it was five years uh, I really thought it was like one or two years ago yeah um, it, it's, um, it seems like time goes faster the older we get oh yeah oh yeah yeah uh, yeah definitely familiar with that um, but I, I but I see that you, you is Mind Wars still a going concern then you're you're kind of well it's a three piece isn't it 
It's a three piece. And it, it was really sort of put together by accident. Um, the, the drummer and bass player both live in Italy, although the, the drummer is now trying to get, he got his visa and he's trying to get a green card for the States. But um, he reached out to me about three, four years ago through Facebook. And he actually interviewed Holy Terror when we were on tour with uh, Nuclear Assault and Exodus. And we sort of developed a kinship only because my family, my mom's side of the family, is from the same southern portion of Italy that he was from. And so when we reconnected, um, we, just, we started chatting through Facebook, and one thing led to another. Um, it was, you know, living in two continents, it's difficult enough. And so we thought trying to add a second guitar player and another singer would just be way too burdensome for the band. And quite frankly, I didn't think it was going to go very far, but, you know, we're getting ready to release our third record through Dissonance this time. And um, we actually played a, a show in, in, in the UK last uh, fall and a bunch of shows in Italy. So I, who knows what's happening with it? It's pretty crazy. I didn't realize you've been over. How, so where did you play? So we were supposed to play at the Underworld. And yeah. I, can't remember, I can't remember the name of the band that... Um, uh, that was headlining, but for some reason they pulled out and, um, it was, gosh, what what's the guy's name? Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, John, John Viner. Oh yeah. Oh, um, everyone knows John. Yes. So John, um, you know, he, he was sending us emails, um, when I was in Italy and we were getting ready to fly over to play the underworld and he, he gives us this news and he set something up at the Dev, which is just down the street yeah, from it. Oh. And it was and it was and it was just us. It was just us that played. It was actually quite quaint. There were probably, I don't know, fifty to hundred people there and yeah. just there were, there was a guy that uh, that lived in, in Hungary and he'd never seen Holy Terror and he'd been dying to see Holy Terror. So we actually we actually played a Holy Terror song too. Man, that is that is a kind of weird. Okay. It is. Well, I I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, in 20, whew, 2016, um, just over a year ago, uh, we set off to play at Hammerfest and we got stuck in a massive um, car crash and truck crash. And, uh, oh. and basically it meant that our slot at the festival went with us still about 100 miles away. So we had to turn around, come back. We'd spend 17 hours in a van at this point. Uh, and our bass player f- uh, rang a friend of his and t- instead of playing to a huge festival crowd down in Wales, uh, guess where we ended up? At the Dev. And, um, and we did the exact same thing as you, which was just basically, you know. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And, and, and to the extent that we also had somebody in the crowd who hadn't seen Acid Rain since, like, they were, te- they were a teenager. And they got, and they got a, they, wow. they, a friend of them messaged them and said, um, are you in London? And she was like, yeah. And he said... Um, Acid Rain are going to play the Dev. It's a surprise show. They couldn't play Hammerfest. Get over there now. And she said she's she's like a school teacher, and she was at some like she was at some event, and she just started going around saying, "Yeah, I'm sorry, I've got to go. Family emergency." And, um, <laughs> and she that left. That is this, incredible. Yeah, she left this school event to come down and see us play the Dev. And uh, so yeah, the totally same experience, dude. Wow. And and it's like it's one of those. Yeah, you know, the show must go on. We're going to fucking do it. You sounds like you and I have a, like a parallel universe going on with our coincidences here, you know? Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I just I just hope you don't try and Skype anyone because otherwise you're going to get my, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get my experience all over the place. <laughs> um, so how did the, how did all the um, how did all the re releases come around? Because uh, are they coming out on the same label that your stuff's going to be coming out on? Yes, it is. So. Um... Again, it was through John. I didn't even know that the re-releases were happening. Um, Kurt has, I guess, a vault of material and old tapes from back in the day when we recorded um, Terrence Submission and Mind Wars. And um, he's been working with various people to, to put them out. And I think he was working with Steve um, Beatty um, yeah. from Dissonance. Yeah, so the, yeah, John, I know, I know Steve. After, we, after we played the dev... Uh, John sent me a message and he CC'd Steve and he said, Hey, um, this guy wants to chat with you, uh, about some things. And so, um, Steve and I did a, a Skype call. It actually did work. Um, and, uh, good, he said, good. Hey, you know, um, we're putting out this, uh, this Holy Terror thing. And, you know, are you, are you, um, do you know about it? I said, no. And he goes, well, 
you know, would you be willing to um, send us a bunch of stuff? And, you know, I have boxes of, of photos and, and just different things and such. And, and I said, sure. And so I, I sent them all the things. Um, I think we uploaded it to Dropbox or something, some share, share folder thing. Yeah. And, um, and then he, he said, would you be willing to write the liner notes? And I, sure, why not? And then, uh, you know, he mentioned Mind Wars, and he says, hey, I like your stuff. Um, would you entertain uh, releasing your next record through Dissonance Productions? And I, I was like, sure, why not? And so at the time, I really didn't know much about it. I knew about Steve, and I knew about Plastic Head. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know about Plastic Head. Absolutely. And so um, we just started chatting, and uh, one thing led to another, and, and they signed us. And, and we're, we're ecstatic. We're thrilled to... You know, we, we, we signed the first two records through P18, which is a, a, an Italian label, and um, they, they gave us great support, but um, we're hoping that Dissonance can just take us to that next level. Cool, man. Cool. Well, um, uh, okay, strap yourself in for parallel experience. So, around um, <laughs> about late 2014, um, I was talking to a guy called John Ryan, who worked for the agency, uh, Huge IJ agency. He's like he's rep over here for people like uh, Trivium and and all sorts. And um, he said, "Oh, um, uh, mate, of mine runs a record label. They they do great vinyl re releases, um, and uh, you should hook up with them." Um, and that was Steve Beatty. And um, <laughs> so so then um, so then I get in touch with Steve and I say, "Hey, Steve, we've been put in touch." Blah blah blah. And he comes back and says, "Look, I wouldn't be interested with doing the vinyl because a lot of your stuff is still available." the original releases it's like yeah it's, it's sold so little um it, you know there's, it's, there's still brand new stuff out there he said but i'd love to do the cds because cds go for silly money on ebay i was like yeah great so we put together a triple cd box set which contains pretty much every single song we ever recorded um and he said do you want to do the sleeve notes and i said yes <laughs> And this is crazy. This is insane. And, um, so yeah, so so we, and and so it, it came out. The only difference between mine and yours experience was that I was kind of like involved at the. In- I was I was effectively one of the instigators in it. But um, yeah, I, when you when you were recounting that story, I was just thinking, oh, I don't believe this. This is wild. This is wild. So hey, when are we going to play together now? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, if Skype's anything to go by, never. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna to try to send you a photo through Skype. I think I can do it. So I just yeah, yes. Let's see if it, let's see if it goes through, and, uh, and see if this brings back a little bit of memory. I was, I was gonna say how 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 old how old do we sound? Right. I'm gonna try and send you a message. <laughs> right. Yeah, let me do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I've done it. Can you see it? Is it there? <laughs> I can see it. All oh, right. Okay. Let's have a look. Um, oh. Let's get this whole. Oh, I'm just downloading it. Oh no, I cancelled. Uh, that was brilliant. Okay, <laughs> so let me go see if I can find some youngster to help me yeah. out. Oh, right now I've uh, actually it's it's opened. Um, oh, right, okay, so it's the wrong way round. So I've got to go in and do that. But um, yeah. Oh wow. Does that re- does that remind you of something? Yes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I I tell you something as well. I am so glad I'm not in that picture. For for listeners, it's a picture from. Um, from the stage um, at the garage in Nottingham, and uh, somebody's wearing a Jason mask because yeah. it was 1985. Why wouldn't yeah. you? Um, uh, yeah, he's going to be picking up all the chicks tonight. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, and 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 I'm not in it, and that's such a fucking relief. Um, yeah, I can't tell if that's heresy or napalm death. I don't remember. I just you know when we chatted briefly. Um, we first started talking uh, this afternoon. You know, you mentioned that sweat was dripping off the the ceiling, and you can kind of yeah. see the shiny gleam of of moisture on that ceiling. That that place was brilliant. Is is it still around? Um, I don't know because um, that's in. Um, I I suspect not. Like most venues that uh, that right. you and I have ever right. played. Um, yeah. Well, certainly in the UK. I mean, uh, I, I, you know the 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 death of live music venues is um you know it, it began a long time ago and it just seems to be increasing um yeah. but um uh no I, I don't know about that place but that was that was my i mean i traveled i traveled about um yeah about, about 150 miles for that show um so 15 years old i think that was 1985 wow. i'm pretty sure oh actually no i'll tell you what it I, was 19 19- i think it was a little bit later 87 it was 87 yeah, yeah, because yeah. we had we just heard 
that Music for Nations wanted to sign us. So we were we yeah. were like, oh my god! And then I got I went to that gig. Um, so it's 1987 because I remember the drummer from Heresy um, a, a, already calling me a, a sellout because we were signing with a rock and roll label. Because <laughs> uh, oh. you know, harder core than thou and all that. It was uh, oh. yeah, absolutely bizarre, but there you go. Great times, great times. I, I, oh, we, we really are sounding like a couple of old men now. Uh, I know. Is it, oh, good times, good times. I remember <laughs> those days. I, actually, do you know who John Peel is? That sounds familiar, but it doesn't ring a bell. Famous old British DJ, the Peel Sessions. It's, yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, okay. I, well, basically, he was a huge cult figure over here. And I mean, like, you know just huge and um he got me into the descendants and i was wearing um, and my i met john peel story i was wearing a descendants t-shirt and i bumped into john peel at your show and wow. i got to have a chat with him and i got to say you got me into the descendants thank you very much and he was like oh it's a pleasure and all the rest of it and uh it's just an absolutely lovely lovely guy um who went who went on to play a some stuff of ours as well because I said I, when I said him that night uh, I said we've just signed a deal I'm I'm going to send you like our album when it comes out and you've got to play a track and he did and he was uh, yeah just a lovely lovely guy um, but again that just adds to the weirdness of that whole night yeah yeah that night was wild that was a wild venue it was it uh, I think we played four or five shows in the UK we played a place called Stevenage I, I don't yeah. know the name of the venue yeah. Um, but I remember we didn't have a place to stay and gosh, I'm, I'm bad with names, but I know if I saw him, I'd recognize him. This, this guy asked us if we wanted to go stay at his flat. And so we did because we had nowhere else. And I think we all just slept on the floor, but it was, if it, it was for him, otherwise we would have been sleeping in a car. Well, um, um I, in which case that brings that, that brings up another holy terror story, which is my other holy terror story. And I wasn't there, but, um, you uh, were un- unceremoniously dumped off the Exodus Fabulous Disaster Tour in Europe, if I remember yes. rightly. And the band who replaced you were my very good friends and very close friends, um, Reanimator, a UK thrash band. Oh, yeah, of and, course, yeah. And because, um, of course, I was at home privately pulling my hair out that we weren't being flown out there because we'd already supported Exodus on their UK leg. And uh, but that's that's a, that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, they and of course they told us all firsthand um, about the, the kind of what happened because it sounds like that that was a a right royal rock and roll mess. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. Um, so we. It's it's kind of a complicated story. When we got signed, initially, it, it is it is. That's why I'm asking you to tell it because it's yeah, like, you know, it, well, that it, is it, your story. But um. and it, and it really is the it was the beginning of the end, which is really a shame. But so we were signed initially to Music for Nations, and we they signed us for two records, um, Terror and Submission and Mind Wars, but only in Europe. We didn't have any sort of. Um, uh, distribution or uh, release in the states, and so our manager eventually got us a um, deal with uh, Road Racer, and with um, oh gosh, I can't remember who the distribution was, but it was through Road Racer, and and they said, okay, we'll take your first two records, but we want your next three in the U.S. as well as Europe. And so while we were on tour with Exodus and Nuclear Assault, um, uh, Music for Nations, I think it might have been Mark Palmer even, he reached out to our, um, our manager and said, hey, you know, we're looking to sign you guys now we're, to extend a, an offer um, for your third, fourth, and fifth, or however many more. And he told um, Music for Nations at the time, sorry, but we're signed to Road Racer and Roadrunner. And um, that just flipped flipped them out, and we got they got they immediately called the tour and said kick Holy Terror off, and um, we didn't know what was happening. In, in yeah. fact, um, uh, there's I have a picture somewhere here of um, us in the back of a truck because they loaded us and all of our gear in the back of the truck, and yeah. it wasn't Gary Holt. Who's the other guitar player from Exodus? The original guy, Rick, um, Rick, 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 yes, Honnold. Rick, Rick Honnold. Yeah. So I have a picture of Rick looking in the back of the truck, waving goodbye to us as they, as they shuttled us off to the airport. 
And, and so, uh, yeah, he sorry, was sorry, saying, sorry. We were furious. We, we were absolutely pissed. Yeah. And um, so Kurt, being the guy that never wants to give up, he said, screw this. We're going to rent a, a van and we're going to go to the next show. And so we sh- we showed up. Um, it was I can't remember where it was. I think the last show we did was somewhere in Germany, and so it, was, it had to be somewhere else in Germany. Maybe it was Freiburg or something like that. So we showed up, and um, you know we're standing around, and, and they they're saying it must have been your friend, uh, his band, um, come back and say, um, uh, you know, hey, you know, we're, we're we're we've been filled in, and and you guys aren't on the show, and Kurt's talking with our manager and trying to square things away, and. Evidently, we were not booked for the for the tour as Holy Terror. It was Exodus, Nuclear Assault, and Special Guests, and we were the special guests. And so, I guess that was how they were able to pull us off. Um, and so, Kurt gets up and starts loading our gear on the stage, and the road manager comes over to him, and I think he has like some big bat or or two by four board or something. And so, Kurt and he get into a big scuffle. And uh, I think Kurt socks the guy or something. Yes, yes, and, he did. And, he did. Yeah, and, and well remembered. And, and then the the uh, they said they were going to call the police on us, and so yeah. we all piled into the van and jetted out to a, a pizza place. And I I was done. It, it there there were some things that were going on in the, in the states um, on our prior uh, U.S. tour with uh, DRI, and I, I don't know if anybody knows this. But we actually played about thirty shows as a four piece without Kurt. Yes, yeah, uh, I, I did. I did actually know that. Yeah, and so th- there started there started to be some bad blood, and you know, on on the on the flight over for this tour with Exodus and Nuclear Assault, Kurt and I pretty much made peace, and um, and we agreed to move forward, and it, things were looking good until all this came to a crashing end, and um, the the sound guy and the uh, um, uh, the roadie that we had were also from the States, and they said, you know what, we're, we're bailing, we're hopping on a cab, and we're going to the airport in Munich. And so I joined them. I said, you know what, I'm, I'm out of here. Um, I don't want to deal with this. And Kurt said, if, you know, if you leave now, consider yourself out of the band. And so, you know, at the time, I didn't really think of the, the finality of it. It was more of, I just wanted to get out of there and get home. Yeah. I didn't want to have to deal with any kind of police or anything like that. Yeah. And so um, when I got back, and then Holy Terror were there. They stayed there. Um, Kurt, Floyd, Joe, and Keith, for, and, and another roadie, stayed there for at least a couple more weeks. And I think Keith came down with the flu, and it was just miserable. And they ended up not getting back on the, on the tour, and they flew home. And uh, I was delivered a message from Keith that uh, that, that was it. I was, I was done with the band. And so... Yeah, that was that was an unceremoniously end to my tenure with Holy Terror. They continued a little bit without me, um, but it, it came to a grinding halt when uh, when Kurt, Floyd, and Joe decided to move up to Seattle because that's where Kurt's originally from. And then when Keith said he's not moving, that was the finality. Because without Keith, you really don't have Holy Terror, at, no. least, at least in my mind. Yeah, no, and uh, I'm exactly the same. I think I think the the performance he puts in on Mind Wars. Is um is just Oof. absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, it is. and and yeah, I mean, I can't wait to hear those tunes again. So as I've done with uh, as we've done, let's let's continue the Mike and Howard's shared stories game. Uh, <laughs> the tour manager you punched was my tour manager. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, um, uh, do, uh, are you are you a, a, an owner and a, an appreciator of Ride the Lightning? Yes, of course. That was probably one of my favorite records at the time. Well, if you, if in that case, you will remember credited on the inner sleeve as tour manager was Jem Fat Bastard Howard. Yes. 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 From Music for Nations. That's yes. who. Yeah, that's who you hit. Um, oh shit! No, who who was the who was the guy that signed Acid Rain? Um, the guy who didn't sign Acid Rain and turned us down for Music for Nations was Mark Palmer, the guy oh. who signed you up. <laughs> Wow! Wow! This is this is too much. <laughs> this is too it's, much. It is really odd, isn't it? It's really it's it's, it's cool because, like, you know, with with each sentence, you're like mentioning a name or triggering a memory of mine that that, that is like from around the same time. You know, 
Um, wow. I'm trying to remember the tour. Um, uh, Exodus is tour manager at the time because it was a guy. It wasn't. It was before they got hooked up with Tony Isabella. Yes, um, yes. And it was a guy, and I can't. And I just remember thinking that he belonged. He looked like he just belonged in a cop film, or or, or like you know. Uh, he just like yeah. he was always like he'd like wear a, a smart black leather jacket and 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 sunglasses all the time, and it was just like he couldn't have looked more sort of out of place. Right, um, right. Nice right. enough guy, but um, clearly uh, didn't stick in your mind either. Uh, <laughs> no, no. But you know, all the guys in in Nuclear Assault and Exodus, they, they were so yeah. gracious and just they were just friendly guys. I mean, there was no sort of. Uh, uh, you know, competition between the bands or anything. It was just yeah. really the camaraderie was really amazing. And, and I, I was very thankful for them. I, I seriously doubt if any of them remember that tour, but who knows? Maybe they do. Well, uh, funnily enough, I'm, I'm, I'm in touch with, um, uh, well, we toured, we toured twice with Nuclear Assault, once with Exodus, um, toured with Dark Angel as well. And who, and I'm, I'm still in touch with guy with, with all of them. Um, and it's, it's amazing. I, I, funnily enough, we, um, um, Acid Rain. We played. Uh, we played the. Oh, what was it? The um, uh, Eindhoven Metal Meeting in 2015. And, oh wow! Um, and we just played the show. We were backstage, just come off stage, and I just hear hear shouted across the uh, across the backstage area, Howard! And I was like turned around, <laughs> and there's Dan Lilka stood the other side of the room, going, "That was fucking awesome, dude!" And I was like, "Wow, it's Dan." And it's like he, they were about to, they, you know, they, they were, I think either, they played their very last European show the night before. Um, and Dan had stayed, Dan being Dan, he'd stayed over an extra night because it takes Dan two days to say goodbye to uh, people in, <laughs> in, course, in Holland. Because, yeah. I mean, I've toured, I've, I've, I've toured with Nuclear Assault in Europe. I have seen a tour itinerary that had, that had us doing, that had us having four days off in Amsterdam and no show <laughs> in Amsterdam. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. Well, it was just as well, actually, because our guitarist left, well, left a note in the dressing room and disappeared after the last gig of the UK leg. So oh, I know it, that gave us that gave us three days for John Connolly to learn the fucking songs. And uh, and then John uh, was rhythm for all our shows. Wow. Wow. So, so I got an interesting Holy Terror story from um, uh, from Amsterdam. So. You know, we played. Uh, there were probably, Imagine know, that. Five, Imagine that. Four, An interesting the, story yeah, from Amsterdam. <laughs> there were probably four or five shows we played in in uh, the Netherlands, and and the last one was Amsterdam. <coughs> and uh, we took the ferry back over to the UK. Um, th- there was this bloke, uh, um, Dave Parker, who um, is from the UK, and he was uh, touring with us. He was kind of managing our tour and roadieing for the most part. Um, and this was during. This was with. Um, with DRI on the, on the first one. So this would have been the one that you would have saw us at the garage. Um, and, uh, and, uh, so we we're on the, on the, uh, ferry and everything. We get off and we're going through customs and they open up Kurt's guitar case and they found a small chunk of a, a solid Brown substance. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. And they immediately thought, what the heck, these guys are trying to smuggle stuff. And er- so we all got brought in. It was the five band members and Dave, and we, we got, uh, we got sh- shoved into a room, and they strip-searched every single one of us. You lucky guys. Dude, and man. it was, oh, my gosh. We're, we're like, come on, look where we just came from. We, it was obviously an accident. We didn't bring anything on purpose. But Dave, and they confiscated what Dave had, <laughs> Dave had some rather unsavory magazines that he picked up when we were in Copenhagen. Yeah. <laughs> and they weren't too kind about that. They, they were furious, the, the, yeah. the customs agents, when they saw that. And yeah. uh, that, was, that, was, uh, that was quite a, quite a time. The, the, the word I think you're searching for is degrading. It was very degrading. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. the weird thing is, is like, and I learned this a, a long time ago, um, not the hard way by watching somebody by watching someone else go through it the hard way and thinking, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, when it comes to whether you're at an airport or whether it's a, a you know a, a seaport, whatever, customs 
don't have a sense of humour. Neither does immigration. And no, not at you, all. you know, your job is shut the fuck up, speak yep. when spoken to, ask questions directly, look them in the eyes. Don't smi- You know, don't be Mister Smiley. Don't be Mister Angry. Just you are powerless in this situation and accept yep. that. Yeah, so we, we were all in the same room, but when they searched us, they put us all in separate rooms, and they asked us all what we found out afterwards, the exact same questions. Yeah. And thank good, thank goodness we didn't have a story to tell. It was just the truth, and thank goodness we weren't really trying to do something, and so they eventually let us go. So, But yeah, they, they didn't they, – they weren't uh, – when they told me to drop them and bend over, they, they weren't joking. There was no, yeah. you know, it was all serious business. And I was like, holy shit, what is that? What am I getting myself into here? Yeah, I know. It's the things we go through for our art, hey? Suffer for your yeah. art. That's what people say. That, <laughs> yep. includes, having, that includes having a strange hand, man's hand up your bottom. <laughs> Um, yeah. struggles that we go through <laughs> um, it's, it's absolutely insane absolutely insane um i'm well i'm i'm really looking forward to hearing this um to to hearing um how about that that reminds me um, who's done the remaster on the releases uh, you know what I, that i don't know um i know steve and kurt were dealing with all of that right i was dealing i was working with steve Moore on the uh, liner notes and photos and things like that but yeah. um yeah I'm, I'm not sure yeah right okay well in which case uh, you know it's it, it must it will be it'll be bill matoya the reason i say that is because well that's who remastered our um our re-release and seeing as how we both seem to do everything uh, together or there's some <laughs> seems to be some sort of dna there then um yeah i'm sure that's who it is well and quite and interesting enough um bill engineered our uh, mind wars last record sworn to secrecy so oh, for fuck's sake this is ridiculous <laughs> yeah, yeah this is ridiculous um so um i i, I know um it's going to be impossible to kind of well I, I, holy terror is not going to do any shows because no keith means no holy terror um yeah. so will you be i mean will you be tempted to slip it and do you play any holy terror songs within mind wars yeah so we did one um, last last time we were out, when we it was I guess you call it a tour. We played six shows um, in Italy and, and the UK. That'll do for um, me. That's a tour. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, and and we decided to do Tomorrow's End, and the main reason was I wrote both the the uh, music and the lyrics to that song, and it, it's tough, you know, trying trying to sing. I, I I'm not even coming close to doing any justice to to the song, but. Um, the uh, the response was very very positive, and everybody everybody dug it, and there were people singing along with it, and it just went really well. So uh, we're, we're definitely going to do that song, and then the only other two songs that I would feel comfortable would be the other two songs I wrote the music on Mind Wars, which was Judas Reward and Do Unto Others, which is coincidentally the um, title of um, Mind Wars' third record um, is Do Unto Others. So we may put those out um, live, but. I don't know. It, it's it's a very touchy situation with me, and I, I just feel I, I don't want to disrespect any of the guys in the band, and I, I don't want to disrespect Keith's legacy at all. But um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, you know, I, I hadn't seen Kurt in probably I don't know twenty five years, and he's actually I think just finished a tour with Zeke, um, and uh, it's it's this punk band, and I actually went and saw them when they played the Whiskey. Uh, the beginning of this year, it must have been March or April, and that was the first time we saw each other in like 25 years, and we got along great. It was like we there's a picture somewhere floating around, probably on someone's Facebook, of of the two of us arms around each other. We we talked briefly about um, you know trying to do some sort of holy terror shows, but um, you know Joe, the drummer. Um, he's living in, I think, North Carolina now, which is halfway, which is the entire cross the, across the United States. And Floyd, I think, is in either Colorado or Reno, Nevada, or something like that. And so, you know, we we talked about it, we reminisced, and we kind of left it there. So I, I never say never, um, but it, it doesn't look positive for any sort of of holy terror reunion thing. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind. I, I would definitely entertain the idea of Kurt jumping on stage with Mind Wars and playing a few songs. But you know, that that would be always interesting. But I, I don't know if that can ever happen either. He he lives in Seattle, and I'm here in Los Angeles. And but you know, hey, Mind Wars 
successfully put out two records and played probably 25 shows in the last three years living on two different continents, Italy and, and the States. So, yeah. you know, stranger things have happened. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome that you've been able to do that. And um, I certainly, I know exactly what you're talking about, about that, you know, bumping into people, speaking to them for the first time in 25 years. Um, yeah. Which, funnily enough, I, I got, um, I had Gary Holt on the podcast um, about 18 months ago, and that was the first time I'd seen him since they were over here in London recording Impact is Imminent. Um and I know exactly what you mean about that feeling of, I mean, that's just somebody I toured with, but when you pick up with people that you've played with that you've and you've gone through and had all those unique experiences and at a young age as well, um, it, they make such an impression. They leave an indelible mark and, and you know, you, there's such massive learning curves in such a short space of time. And then when all that time passes and you, you meet somebody who's been through what you've been through at the same time with you, there's just it, it, you can pick up like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's 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 crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But like you said, you know, when you're when you go through all these things and you tour and you you live with these people, you, you develop a, you know almost a um, a sibling relationship with them. Yeah, and it's a very yeah. it's a very we're still despite the fact that at the age we did all this, you know, we we thought we were you know we thought we were mature and adults and <laughs> and all. That. Turns out, you know. You know, that wisdom is wasted on the young. We, um, you know, we, we we were fuckwits and we didn't know what we were doing, and we were and, and we were letting the little shit become big shit and not treating yep. the big shit with the respect it deserves in some cases. But exactly. But ultimately, um, it's yeah, it, it does leave a it leaves a real mark on you, and it, it makes a kind of well, yeah, they're, they're incredible learning experiences. And when you, I mean, that's why, I, again, that's why I love doing this and chatting to people like yourself. We've all had a similar-ish experience. Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's great to just be able to talk about those times um, with people who were there and went through them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, it's a, it's a it, it, yeah, it really is. It's something that kind of never goes away. It's... Um, it's funny because I think I think when it when it first all ended, um, you, I, I don't know about you, but I just wanted away from it. You know, I mean, that's I went to stand. You know, I went over to another band that didn't work, and then I went to stand up. I was sick of bands. I wanted to get away from it, but it just it calls you back. You know, once you've once you've tasted that drug, um, sooner yep. or later you're going to be coming back. Yeah, I mean, I was I was completely sour when um when I finally left, and I was told that that was the finality of Holy Terror and. I, you know, I played a little bit with some friends uh, locally for a couple of years, but I ended up going back to school and I just kind of disconnected myself from everybody and tried to get my head straight. But it's it's true. You it does pull you back. Um, and especially this music. I mean, I, you know, I think some people I have some friends that, that just can't they despise any type of thrash or, you know, punk or anything. And they don't quite get it. But the ones that do, they totally get it. And um yeah, it's just a it's a it's a strange calling that that we have for this, and I think it, it's always lurking in the back of our minds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and um, yeah, I, I well, especially the you know you do, you don't go about things the easy way, and neither do I. I mean, you know, my, I mean, I thought I had it bad with with a member of each member of my band being in different corners of the UK. So I've got a drummer in Newcastle, I've got um, a guitarist in Bridge End, a guitarist in Exeter. Um, and, a, and a bass player in London, but it, it's so they're scattered all over the place. But you, you've I mean, you're scattered yeah. across continents. <laughs> Do you know? What I, mean? I feel like a real, I feel like a real arsehole for even bringing up <laughs> that my band lives far apart because compared to you, we may we, we're all living in the same house. It's, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, so how do you feel about writing and sending stuff over? Because I, I, I know. Um, I've found it hard to adjust to having like you know demos bouncing about and then somebody demos and that, and, and I've I've found that really hard to adjust to. It is, um, and you know the the first one, our our first release, um, the Enemy Within. Most of that material I had written back when I was still in Holy Terror. I mean, there were there were probably four songs on that record that I would have pitched Holy Terror to put on our third one, um, if we would ever have been able to record one. So. A lot of that stuff was already done, and a lot of the other stuff I'd, I had just written through the years. Um, so that wasn't too difficult. Um, we, we pretty much self-produced it. Uh, the drummer Robbie, um, he has a studio in Italy, and 
And so we just kind of did that. And, and like I thought it was just going to be a one shot. And then when those guys uh, came out here to the States um, and we put together a few shows and we got along so well, actually playing, you know, we played together twice before our first live show and that was it. And um, it was amazing that we were able to pull it off. It was almost like we had been playing together for 10 years. Um, and then when uh, P18 said, are you guys interested in a second? I Still had some material, but um, a lot of it I had just written. And uh, I, I, for some reason, I have riff after riff after riff floating around in my head. Not all good, um, some, some very bad, but uh, it, they're there. And then we put that one out, and we said, okay, well, we're going to do this a third time. But it is difficult. And I, I think if we ever do a fourth one, and this, I, I had a long chat with, um, with Steve Beatty about this is that, um, you know, I don't want to do it if it becomes a job. And I want to be able to make each one better than the next. And he, he completely understood. And I, I told the, the guys, Danny and, and Robbie and the other two guys in Mind Wars, that this, this fourth one that we put out, I'm already talking fourth. If there is a fourth one, we need to do the writing a little bit differently, a little more collectively. Because in essence, I've yeah. written all the material. I've written all the lyrics. Um, we do bounce around arrangements and things like that, um, but uh, I, I definitely feel we need that sort of collaborative effort at some time. And, and, and like I mentioned, our drummer, uh, he's, he's um, going through the process of uh, getting his residency in, in, uh, in the States. He has his, his visa, and he's going for his green card. So um, he and I actually have played quite a few times over this past several months, rehearsing the songs together which is different than we've, we've ever done. Yeah. Um, so I think each, each step will just progress a, a little bit as, as, uh, as we move on. So, so does the other guy not in the band, he needs to be the one that needs to start worrying about his, his place and things then, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically, well, basically that guy listens to this podcast interview and goes, holy shit, I might be out of the band. <laughs> Danny is your typical bass player. Um, oh, it's say no more, it's... say no more, that's all right. I know what you mean. I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Treat them like a rubber plant. Just <laughs> keep keep them watered and keep them out of the light. They're fine. And they're fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but, and you're exactly right. You know, it's like, well, you, you know, you, you said, you know, I don't want it to become a job. Um, not much chance of that these days. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, wow. This is like a job that doesn't pay anything. Wow. Right. Yeah. If it was a paying job, then maybe there's something different there. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, funnily enough, I was I was made um, I was made redundant in um, in May, and um, and which was great news. By the way, I mean they paid me um, money to leave a job I hated, so I was I was over the moon. So I've I've been in reflective mood and 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 really just kind of looking at bits and pieces of what to do um, moving forward to um, you know to bring some money in, and I've got a few things you know bouncing about, but. Um, Funnily enough, people who know me and uh, or people at least who I thought knew better say things like, "Well, couldn't you, um, you know, surely you've, you know, you, you do a bit of stand up and 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 you know, and you must earn some money from the band, can't you get just get by on that?" And I just thought, "God, you've got no, you've got no idea. <laughs> you've got absolutely yeah. no idea." Yeah, I mean, it's a shame. It, well, it, it it is, it is, um, and it's, it, but it's just the way it is, and. Um, I think you're absolutely right. It's it, you've just got to enjoy it. You've just got to enjoy it and try not to lose any money. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know? Breaking even is is perfect for me. Yeah, yeah. If you can if you can make a little money, that means you can put it aside and record. Because you know, because I, I don't know about you, but we're constantly being told how cheap it is to record these days. Um, I, I mean, fuck me, that boat sailed without telling me it was leaving. Yeah, um, exactly. It it really is it is it really if you want to get if you want to do it properly and do a really good job, it's yeah. it, you've still got to have money, um, you know, or have money to buy the equipment. So well, yeah, and I, and I think that's part of the problem is is it is easy to record, but it's not easy or cheap to record well. Yeah, and and I think that's what's just completely oversaturated the market is because anybody and anybody anybody and everybody can put something out. Yeah, yeah, no, ab absolutely. I mean, um, I don't know. I may, well, may, maybe this is just you know two old men being old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I completely agree. You know, and, and you know what? 
I there is some uh, we recorded our last single in February in a lovely studio in uh, in the back of this big manor in Wales and and do you know what you just cannot beat that experience yeah, that experience yeah. of walking into a room that's had no fresh air in it for about 5 hours it's had <laughs> four or five blokes just drinking coffee and farting and eating <laughs> eating potato chips or crisps as they should be called <laughs> right, um, right. you know and and you know and 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 that lovely that general feeling of of like being tired despite the fact you haven't done anything not knowing what the time is um, thinking it's perfectly normal to sit and listen to click, click, click for five hours straight. Um, I love that. I love that. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, that, that is. There's no, there's no better, better feeling in my mind. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's like, but the, but the thing is, you know, it, the, the, there'll, there'll be minutes in there where shit happens, where someone does something that they've either never done before, that you've never heard before, or there could be a little mistake, or they might just try something that all of a sudden you just go, "Oh, that's fucking cool." Yep. And that, yep. and 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 they're the minutes where you just go, "Yeah, this is this is so fucking awesome." Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And and um, you know when when we do our writing process, as I like to put it, um, it's a little sterile because we're not all yes. in the same room. We're not yeah. all, and and it shows. And I think it shows in in not only some of the quality. That we put out, but um, you know, it, it, it's it's. I like it, and as long as I'm still liking it, then I'm going to keep going. Well, no, I I know exactly what you mean, and the sterile is the word I'd use. I mean, we've put two singles out in the last two years, um, which we created via you know demoing and sending around and stuff, mm-hmm. and um, and and yeah, you know, it, it needs to be. If we keep doing that, we might we know we might get an album out by I don't know 2025. <laughs> um so two songs in two years is not great and yeah you, you you have to try and make it a little bit more um organic you know I, yeah. I'm, and that's something i haven't done with with my band either speaking as yeah. you know you are with yours and and so yeah i'm 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 in that i'm in that fourth album place <laughs> that that, <laughs> that you're going to be in but this this will be our this would be actually our fourth studio album but um uh, it is a completely new lineup. It's completely new guys because, um, unfortunately, everyone in the original lineup said they wanted to do it, and then one by one they dropped out. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, I've got yeah. So it's a whole new band, and so hence it's even more important where I, I want to kind of find that get that organic thing going. Exactly. Well, and that's another reason why we kept it to three. Um, it's yeah, just a little bit easier. Yeah. And when you say three, do you mean you kept it to three people, or just three? Yes. You wanted to keep yeah, it to un- you wanted yeah. to keep it to under three continents. <laughs> that too, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You no, know, it, it it just with with three of us, it 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 works. Um, you know, we've talked about, and and who knows, maybe if if uh, if we get a, a decent tour supporting somebody, um, we we may try to hire a um, a rhythm guitar player to come in or something. Um, but it's just logistically and uh financially we are all in a unique p- position where we can do this and we get along great together and so um that's that's kind of why we've just kept it to three of us yeah no but that's cool it's like it's i, I mean um it, it it is it is keeping a band together the the uh i mean you can you can work together for ages and ages and ages and have a thing and think you've got a great chemistry and then you spend three days in a van together and you want to fucking kill each other <laughs> You know, yep. It's like you know, you 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 start a tour thinking you're this band of brothers who are so close and on and and connected on every level, and then like you know, a day and a half in, you're just thinking, Jesus Christ, you want to I strangle hate the guy next to you. Yeah, Jesus Christ, I hate the way you ate you eat cereal. It's just fucking right, wrong. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's the little things, right? It is. It is. I mean, you know, I. I'm sure you are, are, are as tired as I am as hearing, uh, as you know, hear bands talking saying, yeah, you know, being in a band is a lot like being in a marriage. And you think, oh, for fuck's sake, really? You're going to hit me with, you're going to hit me with that genius? Yes. Right. I think everyone right. knows that now. Uh, yeah, um, exactly. But what I, I think the point is, it's not, it, it's not that you are, uh, it's not like being in a marriage. It's like being in a marriage which is on the verge of a row or potential breakup any fucking minute of any day yeah you know absolutely yeah and and you had that exact experience you know harking back yep. to that horrendous end of tour in europe 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was well, it, it, that was essentially the big fight, wasn't it? That was that was the yep. kind of like, you know, oh, I'm sick of your shit. I'm out of here. You know, and that's yep. and and yeah, that was the divorce. Yep. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, and and we had been on the brink for months prior to that, and we kind of you know made things good. You know, we had we had our makeup sex, and then um, <laughs> and then it, and then it all fell apart again. Um, yeah. Well, not literally, but you know, figuratively. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, it, it's it's all about, and really, and again, like you said, um, it's it's what you learn as you as you get older. Relationships and communication are really what makes you successful in life. Uh, you know, being yeah, being yeah. able to work with others, being able to communicate clearly. Um, and when you're young, it's you don't think about those things. It was, you know, where's the next beer coming from or, or you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but. But no, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, um, a, a friend of mine, um, well, a guy I used to work with years ago, he said, um, he, he said to me, uh, he said, Howard, do you know what everybody wants from work? An easy life. He said, yep. if you if you can make someone's life easier, if you can. Uh, be less of an arsehole than the than the supplier they have at the moment then you know they'll go with you that's where all this old people you know people by people stuff comes exactly yeah absolutely you know it's because nobody wants to work with arseholes in yep. any walk of life yep you know? i totally agree and unfortunately it's it's sometimes it's easier being an asshole and you just have to remind yourself to not be one yeah yeah and and, and it, it's 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 prevalent within you know, creative industry because for some reason creatives think uh, occasionally that it, it, it's okay to behave like a complete arsehole because how because somehow being an artist is that important. It's not. You know, yep. you're entertaining the world, not saving it. Exactly. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head there. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's uh, it's what I do. Um, <laughs> uh, well, look, Mike. I, I, it's it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, same here. Uh, believe it or not, that's that's the you know coming up for an hour. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, it's been a, really cool. Don't go away because there's something I want to talk to you about. Um, uh, well, I want to talk to you about off air, as it were. But for yeah. now, um, Mike, thank you so much. Um, where Cheers. can people get all the where where can people get all the Holy Terror stuff from? So Dissonance Productions and Plastic Head, and right. just just go to. Uh, you know, everybody's on Facebook now. I, I yeah. try to stay off as much as I can, but um, that's think... where it'll be coming out. And it's coming out sometime in September. But right. uh, if you if you just type in Dissonance Productions or Plastic Head, you'll see it all over the yeah. place. Or I, th- I think I've got, already got an email with a download link from the label. So, um, so ultimate, so, uh, you know, uh, or send me, you know, or just send me your email address and I'll email you out a bootleg copy straight away. I um, need that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so who, knows, who knows if I'll ever get a hard copy? I was going to say, are you actually getting some some free copies of this? You better be. Steve, Steve did tell me he would ship me one out. So he says, as yeah. soon as we have one, I'll ship one out to you. And I said, thank you very much. That's that's all I can ask. Well, he's a, he's a man of his word. Next time next time you speak to him, uh, tell him I said hi. I will. And and Howard, thank you very much for this. This is really cool. And, and no thanks problem. to everybody that's keeping the the legacy of Holy Terror alive. It, it it really meant a lot to us when we were putting it together. We were, you know, we really. We believed in what we did, and it's nice to see that um, that people still care. Well, as soon as I saw as soon as I saw an email from the label saying "Holy Terror reissues," I was like, "Holy Terror! Holy shit! What the fuck? I didn't know this was happening." <laughs> and then, um, and then um, when Andy Turner, who um, uh, I, I get you know a, a lot of interviews through, said anybody want to speak to anybody in um, it, well want to speak to Mike um, uh, from Holy Terror I was like wow this is awesome and that was literally I got those two emails on the same day yeah. um, so I was like right this is two good bits of news and thank you for being so flexible yourself I mean I know it's I know it's Saturday um, absolutely and I'm, I'm, I'm t- if it's any if it's if it's any um, consolation I'm sat in the dark in London um but and and i would have tr- I, I i would have i would have stayed and chatted even longer but i do believe um that any well within the next half an hour usain bolt's going to run his final ever 100 meters in london so um uh i'm i'm all i'm right. all totally i'm totally psyched about that so uh, that i'm good. i'm going to go and do that um, so anyway like i said stay on um thank you very much for helping get these albums out um on behalf of everybody listening thank you for you know a wonderful history 
Um, I was as gutted as anybody that there was never a follow-up to Mind Wars because that album just showed... I mean, you know, Terrence's admission was great, but then Mind Wars came along and you just went, whoa, fuck me. And the third, yeah. al- third album, if yeah, would have been amazing. But It would know. have been amazing, yeah. I know, I know. Yay, never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay, <laughs> exactly. cool. Exactly. Um, uh, thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks for thanks Cheers. for your time. Really appreciate it. So there you go. Um, and what an in- uh, well, yeah. You you heard it. You know how much fun I had. Um, and uh, you know I've I've offered my services to um, uh, to do any guest vocals for um, uh, for Mind Wars, and and hopefully you never know that might be a thing that happens in the future. Um, but um, it was just really good to really good to to, to talk to him, and um, uh, and it was so cool when he started sending those pictures over while we were while we were skyping. It was brilliant. And of course, I should have, I should have set the interview up a lot better instead of going on about King Eight One Zero and some fictional person. Um, uh, and the, of course, we had we just had an, a, a genuine. I know you're probably sick of hearing about you know the nightmares of technology, but we had a genuine nightmare trying to get get, get it working on Skype. And it's either he could see me, but he couldn't hear me, or I could hear him and I couldn't see him. And, and it, well, it, it just it was a fucking nightmare, and it, was, it wasn't making any sense because. The first time we contacted each other, it was like, oh, right, I got through to him. And he was like, look, can you give me five minutes? So I was like, yeah, no problem. And then then we tried to reconnect again, and it was fucked, absolutely fucked. There was, no, there was just no way we seemed to be able to get hold of each other. Um, but, you know, uh, that was uh, that was interesting, wasn't it? Um, not really, Howard. Not listening in for that shit. Get on with it. Okay, fair point. I hear you. Um, so what else be going on? Well, okay, now... I, I'm, I mean, this is just, this is exciting stuff. This is fucking exciting stuff. Oh, yeah. If you thought the new Living Colour album was the fucking event of the year, well, guess what, folks? It's been topped. Oh, yes. Guess who's reforming? Guess who's putting a new album out? Oh, yeah. You're never going to believe it. The Galactic Cowboys. And that is how much of a shit the world gives. That silence right there. The galactic fucking cowboys. I can't even raise a snore. I mean, I mean, I, I have owned um, Living Colour stuff in the past. Um, the album with Doug Wimbish on, Reddish, Vein or whatever it was called. That, was, that wasn't bad. But um, I could never really get over Corey's vocals. But um, the galactic cowboys, anyone? 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 To, I mean, what's fucking next? Hey? Are the legendary mind funk going to reform? What the fuck? Hey, are we? I mean, really? I mean, actually, (laughs) to be fair, to be fair, Mister Acid Rain reformed here without any of the original members other than myself. I'm sure there's some dude doing a podcast in the states going, "Fucking Acid Rain and reformed the UK thrash band." Are you fucking kidding me, man? Are you fucking kidding me? Does anyone give a shit about them? I didn't give a fucking good goddamn first time round. Why would I give a good goddamn now? Monster, fix me a fucking sandwich or I'm gonna fucking spit. I have really no idea what it is with the American accents today. Sorry, the accents of people who live in the United States. Um, <laughs> but what the fuck, eh? The Galactic Cowboys, really? I mean, I just... Yeah. Wow, I mean, uh, uh, there you go, lost for words, lost for words, next up, mind funk, whatever, I don't care. So, um, so anyway, I, was, I mentioned Jamie Jaster earlier, and um, uh, and I, I found out something that I didn't think I was going to find out, um, and that was apparently Jacoby, or Jacoby, however you want to pronounce it, Shaddix, okay, he of Papa Roach, um, fucking, I'm such a child. Um, <laughs> um, I'm now laughing at myself. Well, what a cock. Um, apparently, Jokerby. J- Jokerby. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I have laughing at myself, but that was a genuine fuck up. And like, we'll talk for food. Jokerby, Jokerby Shaddix works for me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I am having this is a bit self indulgent now, isn't it? I am having too much fun. But I hope you are too, kids. Right, advertisers? Um, <laughs> Jacoby, Jacoby Shaddix. 
or Jacoby, whatever you want to call him, or Jacoby, or whatever, or Jacoby, um, is a really cool guy. And that's where this is going after I've absolutely had fun ripping his name to pieces. Um, <laughs> He apparently he's a really nice guy and he and he, he gets he he's he totally gets it. He's a total hardcore dude. He you know, he helps bands get signed, he gets them on tours and 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 you know, I just when I heard that, I just thought that is really fucking cool, man. That is really really cool because you know, well, I don't need to do it because, do I? I mean, you know, all of you listening to this will be perfectly well aware as to why that is cool. I mean that that is just a really really cool thing to do, um, yeah. And, and, and you know, fair, fair fucks to the dude, fair fucks to him. Um, that, that was it really. But I just I just felt I kind of had to. I thought I thought I had to redress the balance on Jacoby or <laughs> Jokerby, um, because I've I've look, I've I've given the I've given the dude a a, a hard time a, a lot of the time, most of the time. Let's be honest, for a long time. So, you know, I, I think it's only fair that, yeah, you know, I, I was I was honest, let's face it. Um, so what I'm doing now is, those of you uh, may have noticed, I am stalling slightly because I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking for a link. Oh, that's why I'm on the wrong, I'm on the wrong account. Sorry, this is me on the fly. Man plays with phone whilst doing podcast. Um, what a tosser. Right, okay, here we go. So, um, it, th- this is moving on to my my next my next rant. Basically, um, this is regarding Taylor Swift and Ticketmaster, or as I like to call them, ticket cunts. Or actually, let's just call them cunts. Okay, Ticketmaster and your favourite daughter of a billionaire. That's right. Some of you might not have known that Taylor Swift have decided to launch a weird sort of pay-to-play ticketing ticketing system. It is fucking mental, okay? This is just... I'm going to try and give you a kind of paraphrase of what it is. Basically, um, it's it's a verified fan programme, okay? Taylor Swift's uh, version watches like works like this right the details of this are a bit more nefarious however fans are invited to ensure a place in the virtual ticketing line that's right not for a ticket but in the virtual ticketing line in the city of their choice in a really fun way by pre-ordering her album buying other swift merch and or spreading the gospel of swift online as the ticketing site says watch the latest music video purchase the album for the greatest boost post photos and engage on social media check the taylor swift tickets portal for the newest boots boosts and activities that you can do every day so you go online and you look in and you see what other shit you have to do just to get a place in a fucking queue right and here's the, this is the best bit right they're informed that if they if they'd like a guarantee they'll receive um a, a reputation on the day it's released, they'll have to fork out, right, that's a reputation as in a big boost on their online profile. They'll have to fork out an extra $48 to ensure timely shipping, which brings the cost of one CD purchase to $63.03. It bears repeating $63 for a single CD. This nonsensical move seemed aimed to appease UPS, one of Swift's many corporate partners, blah, blah, blah. However, they aren't left out, they haven't left out the fun that you can watch a video and yet you can do all this it automatically these automatically boost your um, your your views and get you further up the queue the not so subtle site advises fans can also flood their social media with posts about taylor this allows swift and ticketmaster to say fans to have to buy anything to join on the f- boy join in with the fun but it will increase but it will increase your chances of, of a chance at tickets Clearly, this system's benefit system benefits the wealthiest of fans. It's spelled out in this cute video, blah blah. So basically, give Swift a lot of extra money or join a publicity team to ensure you have uh, to assure you not have a ticket, but simply a place in the line to purchase a ticket. Whatever path the singer's ticketing uh, seeking occults are likely to take, 
Oh, sorry, acolytes. Swift benefits from a system clearly designed to squeeze every last dollar from her obsessive fan base in a per total perversion of what the verified program is supposedly all about. What Swift and Ticketmaster have essentially done is alleviate the stress and anxiety of dealing with scalpers by making Swift a scalper herself. What else do you call someone who charges more than the listed price for a ticket to a concert? Not only that, Swift is charging extra to ensure a place in the line for tickets, not tickets themselves. Something that is especially troubling in all of this is the fact that you can purchase Swift's new album up to 13 times to receive further boosts to, re to, to your spot in the line. There is even a progress bar showing how you purchase your... T now, look, that's enough, OK? That is fucking enough. I think you've heard enough. Now, I've had some people on Twitter say, oh, fuck it, it doesn't matter. The people, it fucking does matter. For a start, you're talking about an artist whose main fan base is teens and young'uns. And, let's, and that is fucking out of order. Even if you can afford all that bullshit... Why would you fucking do it? Now, I know there's... It's like, oh, well, you don't have to do it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Don't, and I get that. I get that. If you just want to go, doesn't matter, don't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't matter. Well, people who are going to do can afford it are going to do it, and people who don't can't. Well, there you go. Yeah, well, that's not the fucking point. The point is, it starts with Taylor Swift here. It spreads to other bands. It spreads. To, you are allowing corporations to interfere with how individuals actually get their hands on tickets. These are corporations who say that scalping, or as we call it in the UK, touts, ticket touts. Get your tickets. Anyone get your tickets? Can you get your tickets? I'm stood out in the rain. I can't even run a market stall, but fuck it. Buy a ticket off me. Do I look like I fucking give a fuck? You are encouraging, you're actually encouraging corporations to rip people off and not even care. Not, I don't know why I'm surprised by that. I don't even know why I said it. The whole point is they, they are trying to say, they're trying to stop bots buying tons of tickets and them appearing online at insane prices. Okay? So you are effectively saying that's okay if you think this is okay. It is not okay. It fucking isn't. I've tweeted out about it. I've, I mean, I've, you know, I've done my, I've done, I've done my bit. Um, but it's a fucking disgrace. And the fact that it's fronted by, uh, by, by the way, the richest female pop star there is. Yeah, believe it or not, she earns in the last, in I think it was 2016, she earned twice what second place Adele does. Okay, so this woman is already making an absolute fucking shit ton cunt full of money, and it's still not enough. That probably comes from her fucking billionaire background, but who gives a flying fuck? It's wrong, it's out of order, and we need to rise up as one people and destroy the economy! Yeah, whatever. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a catch-up with my good friend Stan from Zentrix, or as the rest of you will know him, Christian Havard. Um, we, I've never called him that in my life. Everyone calls him Stan there you go. Don't know why, but that's the, that, that's the way it is. So, um, obviously, Zentrix are finally back. I've mentioned it on the podcast before. It was time to get Stan on, have a chat about things. And here he is. Hooray, we're off. Hello. 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 Um, so, it's been a while since we had a chat. How was, um, uh, how was the, the Bloodstock madness, mate? Bloodstock was fantastic. Um... It, it was obviously we were all very nervous because uh, it was our first venture out with new vocalists. So uh, yeah. it's, it, it, you just don't know how people are going to take it, you know, because it's um, people have never seen us before with a, with a different vocalist. Um, it's not well, not for a long time anyway. Um, and it, 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 we were all pretty pretty nervous, if I'm honest. Um, I mean, when we actually got asked to do the gig, we actually said no. <laughs> Um, mainly because we just thought, well, we're, we're just not ready, and, and we didn't want to sort of bloodstock to be our first one. We wanted to ease ourselves into it. I but then bet. We I bet. That, I that bet. Wasn't heavy thing to do. I bet. I know who talked you into it. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> as, well, Simon basically he just said, he said, "Oh, don't be so soft. You'll be fine. Be fine. Be fine." We were all like, uh, "Don't know." And then we all decided, yeah, that was it. Was a bit of a softy thing to say. No, we just get out there and do it. So that's what we did. Cool. And it was good. Well, yeah, also, I mean, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, I know it's a, it's, it's a big gig, but, you you know, you, you're tucked away amongst a load of bands, and it's not it's not like you're exposed doing a headline show or something like that, you know, and it's... it's And, I, I mean, I think you've probably found the same that I've found, found with Acid Rain, is that there's a, great, there's a great deal of goodwill. People, you know, people just... People want you to do well. 
Yes, there's a lot of love there, particularly for him as well, because he, he played in, in Bullworth last year there, and there's lots of people who know him and things. So people were coming down to sort of well, well wishing, you know what I mean? So it, it was, it, in a way, it was a good sort of ease into it. And like you say, you know, we, we had a bit of a empty tech to start with because we were overlapping with, uh, who was it? Oh, Creator. Um, ah. so people were watching it, but you could see when Creator had finished, the, the, the tent just sort of filled up, you know, it was like, great. Yeah. Um, I'd rather it went that way than emptied. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's oh god, yeah. Overlapping with creators not great, is it? I mean, I got to be honest. If I was there, I'd have watched them and then come over and caught you. Definitely, no. I think I would have. I would. Yeah. Thinking, I wonder if I can. I've got a wireless system, so maybe I can watch a bit of creator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. It, yeah. It's it's just. I mean, it's a festival. You're going to overlap with somebody, but yeah. it's just unfortunately it happens to be like you know a band that sort of is is in a similar sort of style to what you're doing, you know. Yeah, but um, cause I think because we were like a late edition, we just sort of took that stuff on the chin and just thought, right, just get on with it. But it was fine. It was, it was um, like I say, the, the, the tent was a little sparse to begin with, but um, by the end of it, you know, it was rocking. So that's what's the main thing. That's great. That's so, great. I mean, the, the thing is as well is that it, it, it's you're always gonna you. I mean, you know, you're all you are always gonna get the odd comment. You're always gonna get the you know, oh, I don't know, oh, it's uh, the same the same way that. You know, I have with with acid rain. You know, we're we sort of not exact, but there are similarities in our situation. Um, and what yeah. I and what I found is the vast, vast, vast majority don't give a shit because it means they get to, they get to keep going to see you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, to, to be to a lot of people who were there were kind of sort of old school Dentrix fans, and they were all say, "Oh, we were quite wary," you know, because. It, it, it's it's Chris Ashley's the voice of the, the band, you know. Um, and they, they said, like, first song in, we all thought, oh, we nothing to worry about because he's fine. I mean, he doesn't sound a million miles away from Chris, and, and that was the plan, really. He, he actually said, well, I know what the trick should sound like. Yeah. So it, it, there was no point. I mean, we, we, years ago, we tried um, getting a different singer in, and uh, it didn't really work. He had a totally different style, and, and it, it doesn't work. So... We thought, well, we're not going to do that because when we go out, particularly and go and do gigs abroad and stuff, but people want to hear the old stuff and they don't want to hear it in a different style. They want to hear it pretty much as it, as it sounds, you know. So that was that is, is kind of thing. So, you know, he's kind of ripping off Chris, really, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it, I mean, ultimately... Um, it keep you know it keeps you moving forward. That's the main thing. And and from from what I gather, you're um, you gonna it's 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 off to go and um, finish finish off the album. Yes, um, that is in in process as we speak. He's, he's uh, going to start recording next week. So um, yeah, he's going to re-record over the vocals and then because oh, it's already done. It's pretty much it's all in the bag. And then uh, obviously he decided he didn't want to do it anymore. So. We decided let let's sit on it. Um, so that's what that's what we're going to start with next week. Um, re-recording the vocals, and then we have actually started writing new stuff as well. But um, that that might be a, a little further down the line, you know. So so we've got a few sort of new ones apart, believe. When it comes to like making new, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how to move forward with Zentrix in the, in the. Um, it's like yourself. Do you just drip feed one song, or do you do like the full album? We've got a full album, so that that should be the next thing that happens. We'll we'll release that. But after then, do we do we just you know go and record one song and yeah. let it out there? That seems to be the, 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 a new way of doing things now. Well, I'm. I have to admit. I, I mean, the amount of the amount of press coverage and and social media buzz that we've had for putting a new song out. I I, I just I don't see how we're going to get more by putting an album out. Do you, exactly. know what I mean? you could you could only share you can only share a post so many times, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, it it is it is kind of weird. Um, but it, it I know what you mean by you're not sure sort of how to move forward because it is it is a especially in the current climate. And let's face it, we are you know we you know the band is not the most important thing in any of our lives. Um, no. You know we've all got priorities elsewhere and we've all got other jobs and and, and everything else. So. It, it, it's it's it is difficult to kind of wrap your head around. Well, 
well, what do we do? I mean, I, I, from my point of view, I, I, I know you've already, I know you've got the you know you're, you're going to have a finished album fairly soon. Have you thought about what you're going to do with it? How you're going to release it? Who you would release it through? Would you would a would a label release it without you being full time dedicated to be you know be able to go out and tour it across Europe for six weeks? Well, that, that's exactly the thing. I mean, we we did have some um, offers from some sort of the smaller ones, you know, and you think, well. To be honest, is that worth it? it, it, it you may as well do it yourself because you're not going to sell that many actual physical versions. Yeah. If, if you get any done at all, you know. So it's all sort of digital, online, and uh, streaming stuff. So that's seemingly. I, I've, I've had a bit of a look at that. Uh, you know, maybe maybe that's when we should start make, doing it ourselves or yeah. getting somebody sort of near to us to do it for us. You know, sort yeah. that out for us. It's it's stuff we're going to look at in the next sort of six months. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, it, it's 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 a head scratcher, all right. Um, I mean, you know, then 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 those people say, oh, you know, we'll do a we'll do your distribution deal, and you think, oh, right, okay. Is, I don't know. Is is, is that good? Um, you know, and does it mean yeah. that, you know? Does it mean that we have to manufacture it? And I, you know, I don't know. What you know? What the fuck do we do? It's just you know, it, it's. It's a, it's a real it's a real odd one because I'm you know scratching my head about that when we eventually get round to doing an album I'm, you know it's like well yeah okay let's say you've done it how the hell do you get it out there you know what what is the best way to do it um, yeah and I'm still scratching my head about it I think a lot of the record companies are scratching their heads about it as well yeah. it's um it's it's a different animal now isn't it I mean. To be fair, I think we'd probably sell more if we had physical products and we had boxes of CDs. I think we'd probably sell them at gigs. Yeah. Which is a strange thing. You know, I always thought that was a, that was a weird thing. I always felt like that was like um, what like a, a demo band did, you know, sell the demo at the gigs. Yes. But now it's, 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 it's a different thing. That's what, you know, bigger bands are doing. They're selling vinyl and stuff at gigs and yeah. all sorts. Well, it's, it's come full circle, yeah. isn't it? You know, I totally agree. Back in the day, it would be like, you know, yeah, you they, but that's because if you had albums out, people could go and buy them in the shops. Um, exactly. Whereas, you know, a demo, your only way of getting out there would be to sell it to people at gigs. Um, yeah. And now, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, larger bands, the bigger the band, the bigger the, the bigger the merch stall is like a jumble sale, you know? You've got, you've got uh, well, jumble sale's a bit harsh, more like a shop. But you've got, you know, you've got all sorts of different merch, you know, you've got, you've got, um, you know, then you've got all of your different, all of your different bits and pieces like household, you know, like fucking mugs and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, and products as well. I mean, I remember buying, um, I remember buying a band's album at their gig and they, and they had, um, they had a Gallup machine, you know, they had a chart registry machine at the gig. Wow. So every, so every album was, yeah, every album they sold at their gig the barcode was getting scanned and it was getting, you know, and that, and that was going towards sales figures. It's just it's incredible. Isn't yeah. it? Isn't it? But, um, I, well, look, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really pleased for you about all of this. I really am. And I mean, I, obviously I spoke to you very soon after, um, Chris left and, um, and we've, we've kind of like, you know, seen each other and had a bit of a chat here and there, but I think probably in the whole UK thrash scene, um, the two, the two people with the with the most in common in their situations are probably me and you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, it, we it, we came full circle because if you, you you were supporting Overkill, weren't you, on that yeah. tour? And I remember seeing you, and you and you guys were like, "You've got you've got to get back doing this. You've got to get back doing yeah. this." And I'm like, "Fucking hell, guys! I'm I'm you know." I'm trying, but it's just impossible trying to put a band together. And then it goes full circle, and and you know, seeing you in seeing you out in our crowd at the Bloodstock gig, you know, when we played Bloodstock, and I was just like, "Fucking hell, this is surreal." And, <laughs> and I remember talking to you afterwards, and it was like, and it was just like the conversation we had was so similar to a conversation, yeah. except just the other way round. That's it. You've just yeah, said, I mean, uh... it, it's a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and um, we, we've we've been through it really. I mean, there were, there were there were times when I was thinking, well, maybe that's it. Maybe that, that we're over. You know what I mean? Maybe we can't. We're not find anyone because we've been close quite a few times. And you, the the problem is as well because you're willing it, you really want it. You kind of think, well, maybe this person will be all right in like a month or so. Yeah. Or you know, you 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 sort of overlook big 
things and then you sort of have to have a reality check and go, no, it's not right. Start again. Be, be next. Yeah. So it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's been hard work and, and the, the deal with Jay was I met him at Bloodstock last year. He was helping out, uh, or on the main stage, both helping out bands. And I, I, I'd met him before and I said, all right, mate, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he was saying, how's the band going? And I just said, um, oh, you know, we've got a singer, which we had at the time. And um, I said, but we're looking for another guitar player, so I'll give you a shout, you know, if it, like jokingly. And he went, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I was like, oh, really? Oh, okay. So uh, it, was, it was kind of strange back then. Then from there, when um, certain people didn't work out, um, we, we, we went from there to uh, Jay like, actually saying, oh, I'll have a go at singing. We were like, really? You can sing? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I haven't done it for a long time, and some of the entries parts are a little tricky to play and sing, but um, I'll give it a go. So... Uh, it, that, and he, he basically came down. We did some recording demos, and it's like, yeah, great, you're in. That's, and he's got better and better actually as he's uh, in in, the, in this sort of last few weeks. He's he's, uh, he's really come on. I think. I think the the pressure of having a gig has sort of forced his hand as well. Yeah. So um, it, it's really, he's really pulled his socks up as well. You know, which is which is nice. Was it was it one of those was it one of those magical moments where like you know you played a song with him and you're all looking at each other going fucking hell this is the guy definitely yeah I mean a lot of it with us was um, we needed to get on um, you know we, we're kind of setting our ways and we've got our own sense of humour and uh, if if you don't quite get it then. You won't gel it as a band, you know. Well, I'll oh, come on, come on, Stan, let, away. Stan. Let's get this straight. You've said, you know, you've got your own, you've got your own kind of stuff. You're a bunch of wankers. Come on. Yeah, we are a massive bunch of wankers. <laughs> we get all the time. That's probably what we get on with you a lot. Beautifully, so, beautifully done, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big hugs. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending a big hug down this fucking phone line right now. Yeah. So that that was a big part of it, really, that we actually got on, you know. Um, and, and and then when he could, he obviously played the guitar, I thought, that's fine. And then uh, when he opened his mouth and it was like, oh, right, you can do this. This is great. So, yeah, um, he slotted in, it's fine. He, I mean, he, he looks the part more than, more than any of us, really, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's great. It's just... Um, you know, he's got a black explorer, so there's probably people in Europe that probably won't even notice that Chris isn't there. They just think he's grown his hair. Oh, yeah, oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, I, you just ask, you just ask any of the other members of Acid Rain, the amount of times people come up to him and say, "Oh, um, uh, yeah, oh, I remember seeing you lot in in like in Edinburgh," you know, and <laughs> and the thing and the thing is that's like I, I, I've spoken with a few of them, and Paul was saying, Paul was saying, he'd always say. Not me, mate. You know, and yeah. and he said, but he's like, he's come full circle now, and now he's just like, oh right, yeah, that's cool, because it's just like, do you, know, <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? It's their buzz. Do you know what I mean? And you kind of, you kind of don't want to bring their buzz down of coming up to you and telling you their story from the past that's got nothing to do with you. You yeah, know, exactly. So exactly. I mean, the weird so. thing, the weird thing is, is when people are, people say that to Mark, and you know, Mark was like, you know, five. When they're talking about this gig that they went to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you're you're absolutely right. There there will be. You'll do stuff out in you'll do stuff out in other countries and stuff. And and in fact, to be honest, you'll you'll do gigs in the UK where people don't know. I know, I know. It, it's um, it's it, 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 at first it was a bit of a concern, but I don't I, I don't think it is now at all at all. So what uh, what's for us really? Well, yeah, I mean, and uh, I mean, the thing is, I think it's like it, it, the good thing is you've got you've got that you've got the album recorded. You can you can actually get you know you can get a new album out reasonably reasonably quickly. I mean, I'm not you know not trying to put put words in your mouth or usher it out any quicker, but at least you have got that. Do you know what I mean? Because the minute that comes out, it kind of makes up for the, the the sort of time off that you've had. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, it will. Um... It's, it should be like a just insert singer here a type album, um, and it should all just come out. So yes. yeah, it should be uh, reasonably reasonably easy. It's not like we're going to start writing everything and 
rejigging it. So uh, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, fingers crossed for that. Well, if the thing is, if you think about it, it's 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 if, you know it's not it's nowhere unheard of for bands to take a couple of years off to to write an album. Yeah, yeah, so that's true. you know, all you've done, is, all you've done is take that, t- take that time. T- you've recorded, you've just done it the other way round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> recorded it and then taken it two years the off. Roses route. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, Axel's left, so you're okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'll, I'll not comment on that. <laughs> no, no. I'm, 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 I'm sure if Chris is listening, he'd be having a bit of a giggle at, at, at that anyway. But um, no, I mean, speaking of which, have you had have you had any any communication with with, with Chris at all since it all happened? Um, yeah, yeah, I've seen him a couple of times. Dennis Dennis sees him um, quite regularly, um, but he's, he's really he's not really a big music fan. I think he did come to Bloodstock on a Sunday, um, but he, he's not. Um, He's not like joining anyone else or, you know, forming his own solo project or anything. It's like uh, he's just done with that now, moving on to other things, really. Yeah, and and that's fair enough. You know, we all have our um, yeah, we, yeah. we all have our own path to follow, and um, you know, it's it's been a long time, but it, it, ultimately, you're going to be back and stronger for it. So, any um, any uh, any live plans? These are all questions that I have to ask because that's what people yeah. listening will wanna will wanna know. Any gigs? Well, got some gigs coming up next year. I booked in already, but they're like all the way up to. We've got one booked in April, which uh, I don't know if we'll. we'll you know, it seems, seems like a, a million years ago. April next year, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but we've got one in March as well, and there's stuff coming in now that um, people know we're back, so that we're getting sort of offers for for things, festivals, and things, which is kind of where we're at, really. We. we we don't really we were going out sort of doing world tours. Yeah, no. <laughs> we did anyway, but yeah, no, um, absolutely. Yeah, the festival things are thing. Yeah, well, the thing is as well is it. I mean, I'm uh, a. You can reach a, a shed load of people. Um, yeah. And B. I mean, I would I would say two of the gigs I've enjoyed. Well, obviously, Blood Bloodstock was great, and you get to you get to convert a load of people. But we we played um, when we did our tour in April. We played the. Um, uh, Lords of the Land, but eff- effectively a death metal bill. Yeah. And again, a festival, and I, I'm actually, I actually enjoy, I actually enjoy just as much winning people over who aren't really either don't know about you or aren't really sure about you, as it is to just play in front of your own crowd all the time. Well, that's it. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you get that opportunity to try and uh, try and convert a few people, it's a, it's a challenge for you, isn't it? And I remember that back in the day when we. Open for bands, uh, and we were obviously nobody had heard of us whatsoever, and that really fires you up. You know, give your best voice as you can. So yeah, um, I, I don't know if we, 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 we there's a few uh, festivals where we will probably sound a bit like ABBA compared to everyone else. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you know the one in Poland we're doing. I think that the em- the emperor headline. So uh, you know, <laughs> oh god, we're not, cause it, we're, yeah, we're we're going to be sort of. Uh, the white relief, yeah. Well, yeah, mate. I know the feeling. I mean, Lord, you know, Lords, Lords of the Land. We were, um, you know, it was, it was, it was mayhem and autopsy. I mean, what the fucking hell are we there for? <laughs> Do you know what I mean, we literally, it, it was like we, we, we followed Memoriam on, and it was just like, yeah, yeah you know, it was just. Yeah, it was. It, we we were completely out of place. But you know what? I think it, audiences are a lot more broad-minded than they used to be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not you're not malice opening for Slayer and getting gobbed on. No, no, that's true. Do you know what I, I mean? It's, I, I think <laughs> you know it, it, it. People are definitely kind of like, well, you know, I'll 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 I'll, I'll try them out. I mean, it's a long time since I saw a band get like seriously fucking heckled by an audience, and invariably, yeah. invariably, you've got to do something to merit that, as opposed to just doing what you do. You know, I think if if you're just doing what you do and people aren't into it, they just go, "Oh, well, fair enough." But it's it's if you start trying to antagonise the audience, you know what I mean, and get a, and get a reaction that you're not gonna you're not gonna get, um, and and then start, you know, and then it all turns a bit nasty. That's that's when it's that's when it's likely to go pear shaped, and uh, you know, I don't, yeah. But um, speaking of which, how's um, so how was um, uh, how do you, how are Jay's sort of like between? How did he cope between songs? Because it must have been kind of kind of weird, really. I mean, you know. 
Do you reference yeah. what's happened? I mean, that, that's probably something that will kind of needs a bit of work on. He's, uh, he's not exactly you, you know. Um, <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Um, but I think the, the, the main focus of Bloodstock for the first gig was just to play the parts and sing the songs. It wasn't necessarily to sort of fire everyone up into a frenzy. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah, that, that, they definitely need to... We'll, we'll, we'll be giving you a call, getting some, get some <laughs> tips from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please don't do that. Um, <laughs> that the, the, uh, down that road leads to kicking him out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Um, no, I, I mean, look, all of the all of the um, responses I've read everywhere have been fucking awesome. You know, people have been really, really, you know, really impressed. I think I've I think I've probably seen one negative comment, and that's and you know that that is to be expected because it's the fucking internet. Yeah, um, exactly. And I mean, I think if you if you if you're sort of down to one negative comment, Jesus Christ, that that's basically a massive success. That's as much as you could hope for. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a bit worrying that we haven't got more, really. Does that mean people aren't bothered about us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it, we were very well received. I think, like like I said earlier, it was, it was definitely the right place to sort of um, unleash Jay on, on, you know, the people that wanted to sort of see us carry on. Um, and, and, and there was a lot of love for him in that, in that tent, you know, so uh, not just from me. Um, so it was good. It was it was it was definitely the right the right choice to do it. So no, we'll see how the rest goes. Yeah, look, I'm 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 really really pleased for you, mate. I really am because, uh, like I said, I mean, I totally felt for you when it happened. Um, I mean, I, I I remember having a conversation with Chris, funnily enough, on on the ferry when we were heading um, uh, to the Glasgow gig, and I'd and I'd said to him so. You know what's the? Um, actually, I think it was when we we're heading out to uh, to to Dublin, and I said to him, have you, "Have you got a sort of, you know, is there is there a time, you know, is there is there a sort of expiry date on 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 Zentrix? And he went, "Oh, well, it's funny you should say that." And I was like, and then you know proceeded to say what was sort of going on, and I just I I didn't know what to say. Do you know what I mean? I was just completely, mm-hmm. you know, I just thought, what the fucking hell are you going to do? Because you know yeah. you're such a really you know really good unit. You built some momentum, and obvi- and and you know as far as I knew, he was certainly the only one who was thinking of stopping. Um, it's just you know it, 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 yeah it was it was it was just really odd, you know. Um, yeah, we do know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do, don't you? But um, yeah. I'm just so glad you're back, guys. I really am. It's it, it, Cheers, it, it, it's awesome. It's awesome. And I mean, I, I you know when I know I know the exact feeling as well of that. You know, trying somebody out and going, oh well, maybe, and because you want it to work. Yeah. I mean, I I actually had that with a member of my family. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had. I actually had a. I mean, don't, don't not not right. You're not a brother or sister, but you know, a cousin. Who I fully expected to be able to step in on um, uh, on guitar and um, and um, and we rehearsed and and it it, it it just wasn't happening as much as I really really wanted it to. Um, That's it. I mean, some, sometimes you just gotta, you know, you, you you want it so much, but sometimes you just gotta face the fact and go, it isn't right. And you know when it's right. You all know when it's right. And yeah. uh, we knew we knew with Jay, so it was like, yes, he's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've never been in a band, never been in a band where where somebody has um, worked their way into the position. It's you're absolutely no. right. It you just know, and I can I can just imagine how you were feeling in in your rehearsal rooms as well when you're like yeah. you, you know you're playing your fir- you're playing that first song, and in your mind you're just going like you're counting down the seconds to the vocals coming in. Do you know what exactly. I mean? And, and you don't want to, and you don't want to stare at him and put more pressure on. But... Oh no, I didn't look at him for like a, about three months. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. It was like you, you would just completely just not look at him at whatsoever. So yeah, keep your eyes off. So uh, just let him do his thing, and then slowly, slowly but surely, let my influence just sort of like. Why don't you try doing this? And why don't you try playing it like that? And I'll just try this amp, and I'll just try this pedal. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm the control freak of the van, but there you go. Well, uh, you, yeah. yeah, so am I. So, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> but having said that, look, there's a lot, there, there's a lot of negatives about that, but, but by the same token, um, if we weren't control freaks and if we weren't ludicrously determined to do this, neither of us would be playing in a band right now. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for us, there would be no other tricks, no acid rain. Definitely. Basically, that's what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <it is. laughs> Yeah, it's just like it's it, it's it's gone from interview casual chat to slapping each other on the back. Uh. <laughs> you're great. No, you're great. No, you're great. Hey, we're great. <laughs> uh, I'm giving um, you a telephone wink right now. Yeah, <laughs> nice one. Nice. One. The weird the, the weird thing is, I think was the last time I saw you at Bloodstock last year. I think it was. No, no, I saw you at Manchester. Oh, of course. Duh. Yes, of yeah. course. You're, yes, you'll be uh, you'll be making your debut in our um, in our behind the scenes tour tour diary, which is uh, d- due out <laughs> fairly soon. I shall look forward to it. Yeah, that was the time when everyone posed for a picture, and you said, "Oh no, it's only for people who are in bands." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh god! Right, thanks, thanks for that, Howard. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. What a cu- <laughs> what a cunt. <laughs> always, yeah, always, always, always looking for the joke. Doesn't matter who gets offended. <laughs> That's fair enough. Oh, I, 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 look, I, I hope you didn't cry yourself to sleep that night. I oh, know, I know, I know. Yeah, it's not like normal. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a different night. Yeah, thanks very much for that. And anyway, anyway, you were you, you, you were in the fucking picture anyway. I know, I got in there anyway. So yeah, okay. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, look, mate. It's been uh, it's been awesome to catch up with you. I really do um, appreciate the time. Thanks for um, thanks no, for taking time out of your day. I know you're a busy man. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, and look, good luck. Good luck with the album. Um, and um, you know, as soon as you get a chance, uh, let us know what's going on and uh, and come back on and we'll um, we'll talk about that. Definitely. Cheers, mate. All right, mate. Have a good one. Cheers. Welcome. Welcome Bye-bye. back and well done. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. And there you have uh, my chat with Stan. Some uh, UK thrash love right there. Absolutely. Um, It's really good to catch up with him. And and it's it's awesome to have them back on the fucking... On the scene. It's awesome to not be being constantly asked what's happened and where they are, to be honest. Um, But no, it's awesome to have them back. And um, I'm sure we're going to be playing a, a show with them at some point. I don't know. You know, before the end of the year. Let's just put that, put that out there. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Um, so uh, let's um, you know, let's let's just tidy up. Um, uh, I, I wanted to go back and say that um, uh, Jane Train, the um, the Adrenaline Mob tour manager, um, who was in the bus crash and had horrendous burns, and I um, I posted the the link to the um, uh, to the crowdfunding page for her medical bills, and unfortunately, um, she didn't make it. Um, she has um, she has passed away, and um, yeah, I, I, I can't believe how for me how little attention that um, that whole story has got. Um, it's a, it's it's a, it absolutely gutted for for that for everybody concerned, and obviously for for her family. And um, yeah, it's terrible. It is terrible. And um, to go back to what I was talking earlier about, well, look. It's 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 time I was wrapping up because this is coming in a very 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 long podcast. Um, as always, it is it's it, you know I, I've got to say it, but yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. It's been tuning in. There you go. I haven't done that for a while, have we? Um, I really appreciate it. If you've got this far, awesome. If you haven't, well, you know I'm not talking to you, am I? Because you're not listening. So there you go. Um, to every single one of you who enjoys the podcast, please, please, please spread the word now more than ever. Because uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I want to make this a thing. I want to try and you know get get more out. Hey, why, why monthly? Why not fortnightly? Why not weekly? And really, really ramp it up. And you know, uh, you'll have lots of lots of fun podcasts to do, and then and then try and make the um, try and make talking bollocks on the road happen, and do some live ones. And I mean really but i cannot do it without you guys i cannot do it without you please tell your friends please tweet please tweet retweet share the facebook page social media is pretty much the only way to do it subscribe friends when they're not looking on their fucking shitty iphones 
whatever you can do i really 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 would appreciate it because it really you know oh and please subscribe even if you get it even if you subscribed all over the place subscribe on youtube please do um give us some positive reviews everywhere you go and let's see if we can get this up let's see if we can make this even more than it is let's see if we can get some merchandise on the go i'm even thinking i might even it might be time for some talking bollocks merchandise so you know and and i'm you know fuck it maybe even do the old spotty fuck t-shirt you know ruining music since 2008 would anyone buy one of those i don't know but anyway look i'm just spitballing her folks hey what what the fuck you know i'm just putting ideas out there who knows some of them you throw a lot of shit at the wall some of it's gonna stick what the fuck hey you talking to me you talking to me am i funny I, i amuse you i amuse you how how do i fucking amuse you uh it's been one of them hasn't it really it's it's just been one of them um <laughs> yeah, I well look, I've 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 really enjoyed I've really enjoyed doing this. I hope you've enjoyed listening to it. If you haven't, I completely understand why. And if you have, I completely understand why. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. It always is. Keep your ears pinned back for more bollocks coming at you soon. Um with James Murphy. And also, please, um, it, you know, please do um get down to uh, Dan from Reanimators. Um uh cancer event is cancer gig in hull i mean that's brilliant isn't it that's that's my plug is cancer gig in hull um yeah i'm 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 really i'm really not very organized as am i but um please do look you know look him up give him a shout and um and and he'll hook you up all right guys look it's been an absolute pleasure i hope you're well take care listen out for the james murphy special soon and here is as promised uh dave ingram's solo cover version of Male Supremacy by Carnivore. Adios amigos.
safe and warm. warm. Outside the wind blows cold, inside the embers glow, shelter from the storm.